What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason. We are here for a special fireside chat. Uh, we have an incredible demo up ahead tonight uh, featuring Freak, an absolutely amazing artist. And man, it throws a hell of a party, too. The Freak and Fam oh, thing yeah. last year was incredible. He's been doing this for years. Uh, we'll talk about all that more uh, right when we get into that. Let me take a minute to introduce my lovely co host, Carrie Strope. Cheers. Yeah. Yep. And right, and, and who are you wearing, darling? Oh, well, this evening I have I have a bow, ben, bow barrett pendant on, but I also have to give a shout out to Natalie. She sent me these earrings, and I, I forgot to mention them last show. Okay, yeah. okay. That That's who I'm wearing this evening. Very good. Well, what about this? Who, what and, kind of and gas? Of course, a, a gas shirt, because, you know, I'm all full of hot air. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. oh. that's our society. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, our order showed up. And and what are you wearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm also yeah. rocking the the glass oh. art society joint. I'm like the weatherman you just started or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta check it out. We rocking that gas or whatever. Anyways, all right, all right. I just wanted to uh, to to mention that man. Huge shout out to the uh, glass art society. Uh, their virtual conference was fucking great. Um. Some of the streams where there were a lot of people chatting were an absolute pleasure. So, man, just huge shout outs to them. And I look forward to more uh, virtual stuff from them. So, yeah, but we ordered the shirts or whatever and the, the thing. And, yeah, okay, so uh, let's get back to, the, to some uh, news. I want to share some interesting stuff that's happened since we last spoke. Um, uh, first of all, you guys, uh, yo, Michael Korhoff, uh, Sloth King Glass. He made this amazing design. Um, uh, you know, it's some sensitive times going on. I'm not going to get all political here, but I think we can all say fuck a Nazi and, you know, fuck white supremacy and all that bullshit that's got us into a bad place. Fair to say. So, yeah, we have these stickers. You can buy 20 packs of them. Um, and essentially, uh, th this is all for charity. They're in the regular packs, too. That You know, it'll be kind of our normal thing. Um, but these are going to support the Equal Justice Initiative, and this is like a charity navigator rated organization. Um, seriously, 100% ratings on everything. It's like the most legit thing. Um, but they're committed to ending mass incarceration and excessive punishment in the United States, to challenging racial and economic injustice, and to protecting basic human rights for the most vulnerable people in American society. Um, if you go to MikeMasonDesign.com, uh, that's it's linked in the video description. You can find those for sale, and the proceeds all go to that. Um, we've sold forty packs so far. They're like ten ninety nine, um, and I'm hoping maybe some of you guys might scoop a pack while we do this demo because afterwards we'll do a giveaway and stuff. But we're gonna make that donation live. I'd like you guys to see where your money's going. So we're gonna go ahead and drop like. We already sold four, like 40 packs, so we're going to drop at least 440 bucks on a dank organization that is, you know, working for a really good cause. Something I think we can all agree with, man. You said Mass there are 10 stickers for each No, pack? you get tw you get 20 stickers in nice. the packs. Yeah, of those. And then I threw in some extras and that sort of thing. Y'all know how I do. So that's on the store. Um, and it, like I said, all to support a good cause. And we're going to make our first big donation. I mean, not big, you know, celebrities that donate a million bucks, but... And this is something that we can do together and I'll keep printing these stickers if you guys keep buying them. And it's just like the hunger fund. It's a perpetual way to help people in need. Uh, we generated a hundred thousand meals for people in need. And, you know, now we're jumping into some other things. Okay. Th another thing I wanted to talk about you guys, um, melt. We had the homies on, uh, here's an update from Josh who was with us, uh, just a couple weeks ago on the show, sharing you know, some beer bottle sculpting and stuff, but okay. They're definitely committed to doing melt this year. Like it, it, if if it's legally not possible, or if Corona be blowing up in Pennsylvania, you know, it might not happen. But as of now, like they're ready to do it. Um, I, they have some really great points about how, and they're taking steps so that nobody has to leave the camp. You know, you'll kind of show up and hopefully drive there, and and then nobody's gonna have to leave. Beer's gonna be delivered. Um, like. Aquarius isn't going to make it because, you know, flying from Japan right now is going to be a little weird. Um, but it seems like virtually everyone else, they mentioned Piper Dan is still coming. Cha is still going to be a headliner. So, um, and, and as you can see here, man, like they, 
you know, not to give anybody a rush or whatever, but kind of a little kick in the booty here. Because if, if you would do them the favor of letting them know if you intend to come. If not, it's okay. We'll see you in 2021. But a melt is fucking happening. And if you'd like to be there, maybe let them know. And maybe, you know, maybe put that deposit down. Or if you already have one down, you know, drop a little on it. Whatever. I, I did just want to give you guys that update. Because, like, you know, first of all, fuck yes, it's actually happening. Melt is happening in 2020. It's, I mean, hopefully there, there's still a chance that things could get all fucked up. You know, we don't know what the deal is, but um, it's a self-contained event. Nobody has to leave. Nobody has to go anywhere to get food. Like they're, they're legitimately in a good spot to make this happen. And I would love to have a great time with you guys. So if you, if you could show them the money, maybe a little bit, cause like they're, they're really taking a bit of a, 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 not like a risk with anybody's thing or whatever but you know they're taking a bit of a gamble to, to be like yeah we're gonna fucking do this and we're gonna have a great time with the homies and we're gonna do it safely but they need to kind There's of a lot of the logistics they gotta figure out you know oxygen fuel food yeah yeah it's, the cabins it's just... are there so that's not a big deal but food for everybody that's gonna be there definitely gas is gonna be there how many torch stations we gotta hook up what's you know what's going on yeah. yeah. Well, it's that plus, you know, with the, the camp isn't even going to be having kids there this year. Apparently all the camps in the area decided to take the year off. So it's like, the, you know, everybody involved kind of needs to know a little sooner and maybe lock down a deck of people coming sooner than later. So I wanted to just encourage you guys if, you know, if you don't feel like it's whatever, or if you, uh, you know, but if, if you're ready to come out and party, I know some of y'all are, and I think we can really do this safely. So uh, I'm stoked about that. Um, Okay, one other thing, and this just leads into what we're going to be sharing tonight. Um, last week, we were at the FAM, um, Melt with the FAM, Combustion for a Cause competition. The homies raised $13,000 for the Humane Society out there. Fucking awesome. Um, and this is another episode from that uh, with Freak doing his uh, incredible Terp Cycler that took second place. I mean, it was a tough competition, man. You know when Shayla's in the house, it's fucking, you got, it's probably not going your way. But uh, <laughs> shout out to, to uh, Shayla, man. She's amazing. Um, okay, but seriously, uh, fam, okay, one event is happening, another is not. Okay, uh, they announced that fam is not going to happen this year, like, as a real trade show. But what is happening uh, is that fam is, is essentially, like, I don't, I don't get in all their business, but essentially fam, at some point in the past year, like, Champs was like, Welcome to the family. You know what I'm saying? Like they may bought them or whatever it'll be. I don't know the exact relationship, but I know that they're real tight. Something like that. Whatever you want to call it, man. The homies are tight. We're going to make money together. So they are going to have this special part of the Champs virtual trade show. Uh, that is, it's 400 bucks. It's 200 bucks a day. And you know the deal, man. Champs brings the fucking buyers. That that's That's the deal, man. They bring the buyers. You bring the fucking goods and a positive attitude to fucking sell. And you're going to make some money. So that's the deal. Uh, you have until the end of the month to register. You can talk to Victoria, uh, who helps with the games and everything else there. Uh, or Kim, who is part of ABR. Or Ross, man, the, the owner of ABR and who helps put on this fam event that we're about to see dank footage from. But this year, because of all this stuff and the timing, they did have to you know, put off the physical show. But this is something that they're doing. It's man, you know, I, I don't know how it's gonna go. It's the first time anybody's done anything like this, but like I said, champs brings the fucking buyers, and that's really the, the equation, man. If if the buyers show up, y'all should make some good money. Um, and so that's the deal. I did just want to sh to share that news. Um, I'm ready to get this party popping. Let's uh let's watch some glass get melted. Glass Central Station, that's me. That's my mission from Glass God to provide our industry with comprehensive dank high quality coverage uh, these companies that you're going to see in the next 60 seconds or whatever uh and events like glass vegas uh, they all pitch in every month a little bit uh, to help me get to all of these events and to you know take time away from my own work to do all this editing and to you know this demo i got you all for the next two hours dogs so grab a beer and a snack um and get ready to see some just incredible work and it's demos like this that we filmed over five or six hours you know that then require days of editing and just to get there in the first place it all these companies are pitching in and some of you guys on torch pass it, it makes it all possible 
somebody today asked, they were like, well, is anybody you film, you know, get anything more than exposure bucks? And, you know, the answer was kind of like, well, they do get paid exposure bucks. Um, you know, this thing isn't a big money business. The entire structure is public and none of these companies are paying more than a hundred bucks a month. And, and, you know, so it's, I don't want anybody to feel like they have some control over what we do. And I want this to be for, for the entire community. So yeah, it's, it's really more of a public service and they all help make it possible. And here's one of the beautiful places that this life has taken me. Not, not to be all disingenuous. I, I love the travel and getting to see so many of you guys and all that. But you Mike know, has been missing the travel so much. <laughs> I really have. Um, and yeah, this is Madison, Wisconsin, where the fam trade show was held. A gorgeous city on the water. Um, kind of an old, a classic city. You know, it's got like a Capitol building that looks like the like the DC buildings and all that. That's when you know you're in an old city. Um, anyways, I couldn't resist popping up at the end. Like, baby, we can't leave town yet. It's Got to take time less. And he, this is the top of the deck uh, where There's this event Capitol is held. Building. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning or whatever. Um, it's just a beautiful venue and in a beautiful city. And, you know, part of the reason that I do this in the first place, you know, I used to do a lot of media stuff and product development and graphic design. And I gave all that shit up to, to melt glass. And one of the things I'd always, you know, hoped was like well maybe i won't make as much money but hopefully i'll get to travel and and it enjoy all enjoy what up, you do it all ended up working out yeah well, i always enjoyed what i did i was never too unfortunate there were a few shitty jobs over the years but anyways i mean it was it's such a beautiful place i i really i just wanted to take a moment to let y'all kind of know where we're at and that now we'll get into what it is here this is freak a, a, a true a gentleman kind spirit i, I can't uh, thank him enough for allowing me to put a camera in his face uh this is an artist i can't like say that i know well or anything so you know he's he was real kind to, to let me stick that camera in for this entire process um now okay what's happening here he has all of these pattern discs and he's known for this filicello technique among other things you know for really cool sculptural stuff and He's he's got an interesting body of work, um, but in this case, he's brought these filicello sections that have been you know flipped or whatever, or still in disc form, and uh, he's essentially building tubing live off of them, and it's you know it's it's like live coil potting. You'll see him do this technique over and over again, and sometimes he starts it like this, like more, a more traditional coil pot. Other times he's going to flare a section open in order to build a bigger section of tubing off of it. I, I think it's a fascinating methodology and I really, we're going to get to see this sort of thing quite a bit over the next, um, like I said, a couple, like about hour and 45 minutes here that, that we're going to be enjoying this. And uh, man, it, I think it's a great opportunity to see how, you know, w with these walls, like, you just watch all the striations in that wall have already pretty much gone away just by virtue of how much heat he soaked into it. And you can kind of see it getting a little loose there, started to drip away, you know? Like, I think he's going to want to let that cook back just a bit so it doesn't thin out where it connected. But letting just enough heat drift back into the disc section to really make sure that seal is happy. And just hear, a, you know, a lot of that, that L. Marver action to make that section uh, stay... Uh, flush and in line with um with the existing blank so yeah like a lot of just like building tubing live off of these pattern sections that you know you might not necessarily think would um you know you would do a coil pot off of something already so complete right it's uh you know i, I just thought it was a really unique approach also, guys, I guess I didn't mention earlier when we were talking about this trade show, um, the virtual trade show that's coming up. Uh, we're also, uh, the first day of it is like the 7th is a Tuesday of next month. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a special that features a lot of the other artists who are part of this flame off. Like I awesome. filmed and Carrie filmed the entire time. Yeah, so we're going to do like a Melt with the Fam trade off special. Um and, and yeah, so that'll be kind of part of that, not officially or whatever, but after y'all are done making some money there, hopefully, you know, 
uh, we'll, we'll time it out so that it starts after uh, the the times that y'all saw a minute ago on the flyer. It's like 1030 Eastern. So we'll probably start at 11 that night. Go back to the original timing. Um, and yeah, just man, watch how the homie uh, flares these sections out and gets them all ready to connect or to continue coil potting and change the diameter. It's just a super fascinating way to, to uh, build the structure of these pieces. So we're going to watch quite a bit of that and how he makes all these different shapes. And here he is. He's going to grab another disc to go on the bottom. You know, he just got a punny hot and you could, couldn't could really see it. So we cut past it. But, you know, he went into the there and just tagged it in the kiln and brought it out. And there, you know, it was like a little bit of a rough stick there, but. That's okay. He's, he's going to just mash it down and it'll all cook right back in and kind of by virtue of like the weight of the disc and keeping it centered, it should all end up sitting back. See that he's using the paddle to just push that seal down from behind. A lot of times that's just what you got to do, you know. Talk about seals and um, Mike Ganan is one of my important teachers and he has this methodology he teaches. He calls it 40 40-20. And it's like a, a breakdown of your work. Uh, 40% is like getting those holes opened uh, to the same diameter and having the wall weights proper and having the holes be flush, you know? Like one, there's no like bleb of glass, you know, pushing out and all that shit. Um, and then the next 40% is like the actual stick. So in this case, he got it flared to about the diameter of that disc. Let's just be nice and give him 40% on the first step. And then in the second step, it was a little bit of a rough uh, stick there. So it transferred some work. Uh, essentially, if you do your job right, you know, it's 40, 40, and then you got 20% of your work left. But if you messed up either of those steps, it just translates to the end. And that last 20% should be like running around it with the hand torch and just cleaning it up and making sure everything flows together nicely. But if it doesn't, in this case, now he made his finishing step, you know, it wasn't bad. He just had to use that paddle and make sure everything was connected and such uh, it, so that he had air access and he could really blow the seal out from the inside, you know, and make sure that there's no um, kink in there, or air trap or anything like that that'll pop later type of thing. So, you know, just there just there's like a really big illustration of those seals, you know, and he just gave himself just a little bit of extra work, you know, to, to paddle the seal closed and. Uh, make sure that everything flows together. It'll probably take just a little bit longer to let that all cook together. He has the virtue of being able to put a lot of heat into it here, which, you know, if you can really get things this, like, you know, white hot and happy, you know, like, things just fucking flow back together and everything will sit center as long as you uh, keep the weight that way. And I love this tip. I think it's one of the Hornet tips that has, like, a, a rounded edge, a rounded um, neck, rather. And here he's just drilling uh, into the middle there to open that up. I assume more polish out of Punny Mark, but no, no, he's popping that bad boy. Do they sell torches like that, or does that is that something that he modified? It, they sell those like that, huh? That's but cute. I've also seen like wild men type glass blowers just bend their torch tips and shit. I saw Salt do it once. I was like, "Can you do that?" He was like, <laughs> "I guess you can." Like, okay, <laughs> let me show you. <laughs> yeah, like, I just did. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, just a lot of getting all these sections together and building out all the various pieces of, of this recycler design that, that you'll see. If, if you go to his Instagram, we, we could have taken a minute to look at it in the earlier, but it's linked in the video description. And I really feel like most of you guys are already familiar with Freak because he's just a spectacular artist who's been doing this a minute. I, I you know, somebody I've respected even before I got onto the torch, you know. And look at that, he kind of, you know, soaked enough heat into there that when he gave that thing a pull, you know, you just saw that, like, the, the disc tapered out to the blow tube, and it, it just looks really nice. That's what you want when you do these blow tubes, if you can, I mean, you, there's all different ways if you want to condense it afterwards and that sort of thing, but when you get the initial seal, if you can, you know, really let it cook together and then kind of give it a little tug out, it just makes for a happy connection there. It doesn't got to be like super pretty, but if you can, you know, like I said, give it that, that a lot of heat and give it that, that pull out afterwards, it just kind of sets everything and makes sure that there's nothing funky on the inside, you know, it can be a little like, 
wobbly or whatever, but it, there's no, you know, like acute angles on the inside, that sort of shit. That's going to be a fundamentally sound seal. He's cleaning up some extra material there. Looks like he might even close that down all the way before he continues so that it's essentially all color. But yeah, th I thought this was just a fascinating way of, of uh, building a piece. You know, there's some amazing demos out there. I've had the, the honor of uh, filming Yushin when he was sharing like the Filicello uh, methodology at the Corning Museum of Glass. Um, so it's not like we necessarily need to see all of that. I, I, this is just like a fascinating application of, of that technique. And I mean, you can do this with anything. You could do this with stock tubing, but, you know, um, the steps here are just so oriented around the use of decorated discs and patterned things. You know, it doesn't got to be a filicello. It could be anything, you know. All right, here we go. Looks like he's going to set up to, to do more of that, like, coil pot building. And it's such an interesting way of doing it. You would just, you know, maybe it's just me, but, uh, you know, if you were to show me that piece, I would imagine him doing all of the coil potting. You know, if you were like, all right, th that's what it is, and some of it was coil potted, I would never imagine it was done live on sections like this that are already... At this point, it's multiple discs that have been shaped together with a section of that coil potted stuff in the middle. And now we're going in on another coil potted section. It's, it's a fascinating methodology and way of constructing the piece. And, and it really shows uh, like total confidence in his ability to build these uh, structures out live. You know, like he, he knows the rest of it's happy. And he knows that like his uh, technique here is clean such that you know, it, it's just going to, it's going to work out. And, you know, I would have built every little section and had them all sized just the right way and all that. And, and it really shows like the, the power of this, that coil pot technique. There's some wild shit. I would not, like I said, I would not have guessed that how this was done. And here we go. Here's an opportunity to, um, to really watch how much heat he puts into this and how much he lets drift back into the other section. And, um, yeah, it just how much he lets that thing condense there a little bit. All these little things to notice in terms of how that thing goes from a bunch of fucked up coils to a section that he can immediately work off of. I said, I'm really just so impressed. It was really fucking cool. I'm a lucky man to to get to see mm -hmm. stuff like this. I really this was this was like taking a class. Like, wow, what this is cool as hell. And again, man, my man knows how to throw a party. The freaking fam and the his studio is really, really cool. Like it's a large studio with two stories, and the second story has like a ton of bench spaces. Each space was like its own little party. Like it took me like two hours to walk from one side of it to the other because it like every like half the things you know people were like, oh shit, Mike Mason. You kicked me out of torch talk. Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody was like, oh, shit, it's Mike Mason. Let's have a dab or whatever it'll be. <laughs> and um, you know, everybody was super, super nice. Like uh, the, that, that Midwest glass crowd is well, like that Midwest charm or whatever they say, man, that is no bullshit. And I knew this before I even got into glass. I would before often... you even moved to the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I like to uh, go out to Chicago. Uh, for example, and I really used to be into like house music. I still am, but I used to, uh, when I would travel, I'd come out and go to like Smart Bar in Chicago, for example, and the spot in the basement is amazing. Anyways, um, I had some really great experiences in the Midwest, and I, I this is a really chill ass cats out there. So yeah, was, and and that party again, man. Like I said, a studio was like. And a that place ton is of amazing. Spaces. Yeah, it's a cool, cool spot. If you're, I was ever trying out to Google and... it so I could link it, and if Caleb was in chat, he could tell us what it's called. But I don't even remember what it's called. No, like, I don't know if it amazing. has like a yeah. name or whatever. I think it might just be Freak Spot. You know what I'm saying? If if you're lucky yeah. enough to know this man and get to work there, great. Yeah. So um, every time there's a trade show up there, Freak has a party. Freak and friends, the party. It's the after show. This year there was a truck, a keg truck. Yeah, it had like four beers. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was 
really, really a good time. So yeah, man, the, the homie knows how to throw a party. As I understand it, he's been doing this for years. Um, there was it was was it Glass Roots that was there before? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, I've never uh, yeah. Been so involved he's got his that. he's got like his main studio and gallery downstairs, and there was it, it seemed like there were a couple torches down there, and then there was a whole upstairs section where all, a bunch of rental torches were as well. At least ten stations, I'd say. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, upstairs there were a lot of stations, and downstairs there were even more in like the main area. It yeah. was tight. Yeah, and then here's more of this like um, live shaping with stuff that he just made into the tubing. You know, I thought this was such a uh, such a great way to make make something. And that one got a very large diameter coil pot that just immediately got flattened as well. And look at that. And, I mean, you really, you'd be hard-pressed to tell that that, you know, uh, was raw just, like, a couple of minutes before, you know? So I thought that was really great. rough there on the opening but that's okay so he hadn't like he hadn't like pushed much material around so it wasn't like disastrous once he kind of opened it more around but he obviously wasn't feeling that and a little tag to the thing like hate when that happens but as long as you don't freak out it's to you know it's easy to knock off with any kind of like metal tool or whatever you just got to let it cool a second don't freak out nobody freak out man <laughs> All right, here we go. Prepared for another disc. You can see he just did the same thing there and kind of grabbed it. Looks like the honey was getting a little loose. All right, same method there. And, you know, definitely something to notice in how um, he didn't just, like, glob it on there. He started from, he tagged at the bottom and, you know, like we could have watched that in slow motion and it would have been cool. But, like, he tagged it at the bottom and then rolled it up. I do that when I'm lensing Milly. All sorts of reasons to uh, do it with that approach because it gives the opportunity to push air out along the like the seal as it, as you push down. It all happens very fast, but if you do it like just flush, which sometimes can be cool, don't get me wrong, but if you could if you have the opportunity to hit that little tag at the bottom and just roll it up, and there's Josh Mazay, the homie man. We it was joined us last or not last the week before last we took a week off um but yeah that's also the homie who helps put on melt and we, we saw his message and if you're just joining us and i, I real quick if you want to do melt this year they're doing it but you should really let them know sooner rather than later that you intend to come and put down a deposit or pay on the deposit you already made just let them know that that they're gonna be, they have enough homies willing to do this to make it worth their while, cause, you know, like, not to get into their business, man, but you know these guys they're not out there getting rich off this event, man. It's it's a big thing to do for very little return, and you know just just let them know that that y'all's heart is in it. If it is, it's okay. If it's not, I'm not judging anybody for sitting a year out on events, but melt being self-contained. Here's more shaping, and you know you'll see this method often where he's got it in the L marver and just using that as the guide to push against it from the other side to help shape these discs. Uh oh, I think he lost his blow tube there. It was on purpose, just for show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An interesting looking blow tube design there too i was probably too busy filming or i would have asked him about this because he's got like what appears to be a teed off blow tube you know like looped around his neck or something looking good looking good whatever <laughs> <laughs>
And there's that, that fucking awesome hand torch again. I really like that. That really gives him a, a good view of what he's uh, hitting it with. How about that? Look at all that pattern. looks too cool when it's lit up from it. Like, Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Glass is pretty goddamn amazing. Gotta say. And yeah, huge shout outs to, uh, to Ross, uh, to Dave Martin, and all the guys, basically the ABR homies who helped put this event on. Oh shit, there's Kevin too, who was with us last week, man. You know, They're the probably boys. making bottle dragons next door. That's, yeah, they, they uh, sounds like they, they had had a lot of their pieces done when they got there, so they were just like, I'm gonna slap this marble on, and now we're gonna drink and make, make beer bottles. <laughs> Whereas Freak was like, I mean, he came with all these discs and stuff, but he pretty much worked until the very last second, you know, to get this entire piece done in this time limit. It's crazy. I really, I edited this thing down to like, you know, in order to not be here for three hours watching every little like walk to the kiln and that sort of thing. Well, this was like constant action. And yeah, let's watch the man who probably do that same thing. Just get enough heat into both of these that they really flow together. And maybe we'll get an angle on it and see him give it that little tug again. It's that sort of move, you know, really lets it kind of just all flow together. There it was. See, we pulled it out just a little bit. And now look at that. It's got this nice smooth taper into that thing and... That's the type of seal and move that, like, you know you're not going to have to worry about it later. It just That is a completely unacceptable place to have any type of fuckery. You know, it's the type of thing that'll always come back to bite you. So, you know, if it doesn't happen the first time right, you know, pull that shit off and try again until you get it. You know, after you've done this a hundred times or fucked up a few of them, you know, you'll get that butt seal down. That's what it's called. Butt seal. Yeah. He's a, he's a butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but seriously, like uh if you're having trouble with those and you just gotta get the timing down right and have enough heat in both sections, you know, and then after they're together enough timing and and then yeah, again, like uh, that little bit of that, that puff and then that little tug. You don't necessarily have to even give it the puff if you soak enough heat into it that you know the inner wall is happy and then you can give it a tug and you should give it the puff too, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. Some parts are more required than others, but it's, you know, you can mix and match it just, just so long as that inner wall especially is not uh, having some kind of weird kink. Because that's the shit that'll snap and send your piece crashing. It's always got weight on it, you know, because it's supporting the piece. So you know, that'll trigger whatever stress you've left in there. In this case, it'll be like mechanical stress generally. If that shit is like what? There's essentially two types of stress. There's probably more, but for us, there's two main types of stress, and it's mechanical stress, and that's when you've got acute angles and shit like that in the glass, or you know things that don't belong. You got two colors together that are off COE. You know they're pushing against each other. That's forming a mechanical stress at the borderline or whatever, the Donna or whatever. The borderline. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, anything that is like that is mechanical stress. And then there's thermal stress as well. Like, you know, if you just like flash your blow tube for two seconds and then it gets those spider cracks, that's a perfect example of thermal stress. Cause one area got heated way past the stress zone, which is like 980 or whatever, right? It's like right below the annealing temperature. But if you do it too fast, the temperature gradient forms stress of its own. So these are the two types of stress and like knowing this information alone i learned this from roger paramore if you have the opportunity to learn with him take it um he has a patreon now actually it's on the expensive side but 40 a month really isn't much to learn with a legend like that you know you can get it from me second hand you know what i mean like <laughs> or you can pay the man for his 40 dollars give the man his 40 bucks kind of thing um <laughs> 
And here was a bit, there was like a 40, 40, 20 kind of uh, example because those holes were definitely not the same size. So now he's he's made some more work for himself even, you know, like in um, the second step. And they're still a little bit off, so it's going to be a bit of trouble. But all he needs, it's in the advantageous position of being something that he can just kind of do like offhand, you know, like one-handed here and just let it all cook back. And it should all be happy and all that should all even out via the virtues of the beautiful dank heat. The dank heat healeth all. <laughs> but if that were like an Encalmo section that had work on both sides, you know, he'd be sitting there like stuck in the zone, really having to manipulate the where the material is at and all that. Anyways, we were talking about stress um, and Roger Paramore, man, like, he he has a fundamentals lecture that he was going to be teaching at uh at the glasscraft and beat expo that didn't happen this year um i'm hoping that like that they might reschedule that or it might just happen in 2021 either way i'm hoping that he'll be back and that we'll get to have that lecture because i mean i i paid to take it again just as a refresher and it was cheap it was like 25 bucks or something wasn't it I thought it was, it was 40, but whatever it cost, it was pennies. It was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It was cheap. Yeah. And, um, but anyways, he talks so much about what's happening molecularly and, and those different types of stress. And, you know, knowing that shit is like half the battle, man. Like if, if you don't understand exactly what happened and why that shit was set off, it's so frustrating. It's, it's just mentally devastating. You know, it's easy for me to be like, well, you just got to be cool when it breaks, you know, and then you'll have a better chance of saving it. But like, if you don't really understand what happened and why and all that, it's like so much harder to fix and all that. So these are things that are worth learning about. And I'm dead serious about who to go learn it from, man. That's the man on that shit. Um, I don't know if he has a Patreon video discussing some of that stuff, but he just got it started. So. You know, in a year or whatever, it'll probably have like 100 videos or 25 videos. I don't know, but they'll all be amazing and and assist your understanding of, you know, the physical medium that we work in. And that is just so important. You can know how to make it do all these cool things and make it look all this all pretty and all that. But if you don't fundamentally understand what's happening with it, you know, like you're going to end up losing pieces and all that shit. And that saying, I mean, we all know it. It's like it's not what you can make. It's what you can save. But understanding the different types of stresses and, and how heat and all of that um, moves through this material and such, when that is kind of part of your innate understanding of the material, all of that becomes so much easier. And it just, it'll add to your relaxation level. So, yeah, shout out to Roger Paramore. I, 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 uh, I can't recommend learning with him enough. One of my more important teachers. I really spent like uh, the first few years on the torch. Um, I was mentioning earlier kind of this previous life that I had as a single parent with full custody of my daughter. Uh, she's now in a pre-medical program at VCU in Richmond. So it's been a bit of a change for me in the past year. Um, anyways, I, you know, I had this whole other career and I didn't get into glass until like uh, 2013. So that was a while ago now, but you know, compared to guys like Freak, you know, who are doing this since I was, you know, like, like I had a kid and they learned how to make dang glass. <laughs> and uh, so that kind of informed my path here. But in any event. Somebody asked what's up with the Marver, it's all floppy. Is it because he's got uh... A marver on the side there too. I I don't know the floppy marver. I don't. Really and I just it does look like it's mounted at an angle, <laughs> or, and maybe it's mounted loose so that he can change it around. Mm, yeah, it's a good question, man. It does look like that torch is sitting at a gangster lean. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Um. So you know when I got into this, I uh, had like a pretty nice severance package from the last job that I had like the company got bought out and they were like do you want to move to Texas and I was like nope so uh you know I kind of said to myself well what'll happen if I travel you know the country and take advantage of, of all these classes that I can with you know with the uh, with people I consider legends and getting to learn with like Mattis Cookie and Lauren Stump and uh, Roger Paramore and Mickelson and 
Akiva Ford and Mike Ganan. And I, I, I just went on and on. And then I, I got into it at such a great time when so many people were teaching and, and, um, virtue is having like an incredible artist at every other month you know yeah see that the the marver is loose yo he is able to adjust it that was fucking awesome great great catch to the homie in the audience who mentioned that now here is um one of these like uh, fume combs right and that's just like a thick solid bad boy and he's doing the same thing as he would with the disc you know kind of just letting it cook back centered but there's a lot more weight here he's got to be a bit more careful with it but that's one of those like um, gorgeous fumy comb things. And th didn't he used to do the style where they look like brains and shit? It might be one of those. We'd have to look at it to see. But it looks more like a traditional fume comb from here. There's an amazing demo back in the day with uh, Daniel Smith on our channel. I know a lot of you guys have watched that. It's one of the more popular demos. And then, yo, there was an amazing post today in Torch Talk. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not remembering the guy's name, but he posted a fume comb that he left in the kiln for like three weeks, and he showed a video what? of it beforehand. Yeah, let me see if I can't find that, and I'll share it later if you remind me. It was a okay. really, really cool video. Um, and yeah, he showed it three weeks later, and it went from looking like this basic blue and whatever, like silvery type of thing, to like all of those reds and like all those gorgeous colors and now he's got to have two hands on it and really get the shaping of this section where it goes up to that nice and there's another one of these methods where it's like part of it's on the l marver and you're pushing against that to create that flush angle that it needs to press against you know so it's just like a marver that's just accessible to the those outside angles or whatever you know probably not the best way of explaining it but what are you gonna do guess post too often in this group i can't find this post <laughs> <laughs> yeah shout outs to everybody who's part of that community it's it's been some good times in there man everybody's sharing a lot of great stuff but that's not what's been going on for seven years or whatever but i don't know it means a lot that we got twenty thousand dang homies together keeping it real positive especially in a weird time man where is that guy's post for the stream <laughs> Thing, baby well, I should have bookmarked that one well you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it Jason Barr says his firing orders are very specific. He will line up 25 marbles to a kneel all at once to get the same hues. I'm assuming he's talking about that. Oh, it interesting. Like it. I gotcha. Okay. Jason, how long do you leave them in the kiln to, to get, get the colors that you want? All right, here we go. That was a pig nose perk there. Check that out. It's got the little Maria. Now he's going to get it tack sealed in there and I think remove the blow tube. It's going to be kind of like a, uh, what do they call it? Like a double seal or whatever. Where you get one, one side sealed in and then do another seal on top of it. There's all kinds of seals here. It's a fucking, it's like going to SeaWorld. It's <laughs> playing. <laughs> But yeah, um, I mean, how about that hand torch, man? Shout outs to that torch chip, right? It, it, it's just allowing him to work all the way around the edge of that seal. And he's got air access. You can see he's got the, the thing in his mouth there. And you know, he's probably giving it just a little bit of a puff uh, to make sure that that inner wall of the seal is happy. It's all about that inner wall, man. I'm telling you. Getting them walls, guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Take care of them. And yeah, you can you can kind of see that material cooking, actually cooking down, and kind of distributing. 
And now he's going to pop that bad boy open. Because, again, it was like a pig nose, you know, just a little down stem with two holes on either side. So he's got, he can now pop a hole through those holes. And he'll be able to seal over that. And, you know, the, the methodology here of uh, like how he does the, the, the curved around seal and stuff, I think is super neat. All of this is just a blast to see come together. Uh-oh, something happened. Something, something caught my boy's interest there. <laughs> my, my mug is empty. I need another beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your shout outs to Roar who had like the coffee station in the middle and they had all these dank Roar mugs. Some of y'all, I, I was giving them away for a little because I brought some extras home. And me and Carrie kept ones for ourselves, but none of we gave the rest away. So I hope some of you guys are still enjoying your Roar coffee mug from the Bam Glass show. <laughs> it look like a pretty gangster seal there, but I suspect this is going to go on something pretty fast, you know? As much as I'm like, get those blow tube seals really proper. There's also times where you just, you know, you know it's going to stay hot enough and you're going to get your shit done. It's not a good look, though. Oh, it seems like a cold seal. It, it's pretty rough. I'm surprised he's going to coil pot up off of this now. But again... When you know what's going to happen, so to speak, you know, and I think he's just going to pretty like close this down and then be able to cook it all together. And it, it just, it's going to stay fucking hot is the key there. So if you, if you do have a gangster seal and you got to do a move, you know, just make sure that motherfucker doesn't get hot because the thermal stress that when it gets hot again is what'll set off the mechanical stress sort of thing right so see now now he's got heat back he just he like it, it it's now getting some heat right there like it was very fast so it's you know not the most glamorous of seals but that piece came out awkward it was just not the type of piece that he was going to be able to get a perfect seal on so you got to know when you the can bowl what, what is that piece that he was working on there it was just like an open dome, essentially. It looked like huh. a bowl, but it was yeah. just one one layer of glass. It didn't have anything pushed in. That's why he's closing it off with some of the glass now. So now it's like a bubble. But before it was just open. So that's why he wasn't able to get a good seal on it, you know? It just it was a small section that he handled up to. At home, when he made that piece, he might have left it different. But it looked like he traveled here, you know, like he brought over a ton of the discs and they weren't necessarily all like sitting on their thing, you know. So he just kind of had to grab everything and, you know, get a handle on it or whatever. In most cases, he was attaching it to a section that already had a proper handle. But in this case, this one was just, you know, it had to get in a handle first before he could start building out to it. I said, just one of those times where you got to know what you can get away with. No, no. And again, taking the time to learn about these different types of stress and um, just understanding the material and really developing those fundamentals, all of that comes into play in terms of informing that decision of when you can fuck around. See, now that shit's off. Not even a question. And it just had to survive, you know, essentially that, that process. So, yeah. Plunged in there to grab as much of that as he could smoothly, you know? And look, he's really got that that uh, the GTT there in, like, laser mode. And a lot of triple mix going, you can tell. trimming that shit away you know when you're doing these cuts it's just so important to have the glass hot enough and not cut more than 
Uh, you really can. Just let 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 the heat do the work. Kind of what Robert Mickelson taught me about that. You know, <laughs> it's not so much the scissors doing the work, right? Um, if the glass is appropriately hot, it's gonna make a nice, easy cut. Once it starts to get cold, you just get that really gangster edge that's gonna wanna look fucked up after it's done and all that, you know? Then you'll end up having to wipe the entire thing. So just something to think about, you know, don't don't overdo it with the scissors. Get as much hot as you can actually get through and then reheat, you know, and go more along or or just really get it raging, you know, whatever it'll be. Certain circumstances call for different things, but all right, here we go. There's a couple sections coming together. That's going to be interesting to see that seal get worked in because that's such an interesting angle between those pieces. But yeah, it looks like a lot of heat is just going to end up going into the entire thing. And that's like one of those, you know, like, I, I don't know what you write, like, I call it like a luxury, you know? Like if you have the ability to get so much of it hot off the seal, that's great because that allows you to really get the seal without having to worry about what's off of it, you know? It's those tight and commas that are, <laughs> that are the trouble, you know, where you can only heat up a small band and you've got to keep that tiny band so controlled. If you have the opportunity to work a seal like this, but in this case, he's got this pattern disc on it. Not, not to say that this is like an easy, like it's on easy mode or nothing, you know, it's just interesting to see how he works that seal in from such a steep angle. And it looks like he's just going to build that thing straight up against it and out to it. Now, all about getting that connection happy is you're building these multiple section pieces, you know. All it takes is one of those seals being too lazy about it, and then that'll fuck the whole piece. You're not getting a freak's level when you got pieces dying. And yeah, now a lot of heat has been drilled in there. That, you know, that's that connection is getting really happy. It looks like he's really going to give it almost like a tubing look by rolling it in the Elmarver as he's working it. So it's like that seal's getting hit, but it's also getting shaped against it, you know, on the outside. But you know the inside's hella happy because it's very hot, you know? But the outside's getting that crisp angle. This shit's brilliant. It's just really stuff to tuck away. This is like some high pay grade level shit here the, some of these moves and the, the the subtlety of it and how he's accomplishing things it really you know really shows somebody who just, you know knows how to manipulate the glass again that marver being loose is crazy to me i've never seen anybody have their marver that loose you know for the ability to switch up that angle of approach it's kind of brilliant i mean i'm not sure like the 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 Willy from GTT in my head is like, I don't know about this. You know, whatever, but like, <laughs> huge shout outs to the GTT guys, man. They're the fucking coolest. <laughs> Willy is, uh, Willy actually came out to fam. They had a booth there and, and they had that giant marble, like that's fucking like the size of a basketball and, um, you know, some really neat torches. And if you ever get the chance to call GTT, man, and talk to talk to Willie, you know, one of the guys who invented these things, him and his brother, essentially. But his the Wally, I've never really met or had a chance to talk to. Kind of trying to start a rumor that he doesn't exist. But, uh... Anyways, huge shout-outs to GTT, man. I mean, you can see so much of what their torches do in this demo. Like, that's that incredible laser flame the homie had going earlier, and... Yeah, they're they're very versatile torches. Is Josh Williams in the house, my boy, Music Man Glass? Because I know of he's of course he is. He is, he is my man. <laughs> we've been, talk we've been talking. He's got quite the collection building up. I think he's going to scoop my uh, my broken PM two D for historical purposes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah. See, my man is like the torch connoisseur over there. I think he, he's he's got like the Kabuki, and he's got now the Delta Elite that just showed up. Right, that's my yep, baby, yep. the Delta Elite. 
And it's not as versatile as that Kabuki, but in terms of raw, dense heat, there's just no other GTT quite like it. All right, and here's another move where, like, he shaped it out and oh, flared it out to get those discs on there. <sighs> Look at this thing. It's really coming together. It looks super sweet. I'm going to grab a beer in while he cooks this disc in. I was going to ask if you wanted me to grab you a beer. No, no, it's okay. I'll get you one, baby. You grab okay, it. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is the, the, the time when Mike slips away and I mentioned if you guys uh, are not already subscribed, you might want to hit that subscribe button over there. And I see 154 people watching right now. That's great. We've got 28 likes. Um, if you guys feel this is a great video that deserves a thumbs up, give Freak a thumbs up. I'm sure he'd appreciate seeing that down the road when he notices that, that he had a Nice video on, on Torch Talk. Um, what else? Hope everybody's staying safe, keeping busy. It's good to see so many people in chat. Thanks for joining us. It's always great to have you guys with us. If you weren't here, then we definitely wouldn't be doing this. And this fam show, this was a great event. If any of you have not been to Madison, Wisconsin before, definitely a show to add to your list in the future. Thank you, love. Of course. Booty seal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, these seals just, man, see how much time he took there and how much heat he's soaking in there? At this point, it's really, he let it get a little too loose. <laughs> you saw that shit, but yo, I mean, he, he kind of let it, he pushed it back together, you know? Um... But, yo, it's better to do that than to not put enough heat into that connection and then have it go bad on you later. He seems fairly capable of managing it. Yeah, no, totally. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's one of those things, you know. You can be a little more cavalier as you get into this. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't mean to, like, disturb anybody, but the reality is that the first few years of this shit are, like, they're rough. I mean, the first 10 years can be rough. Um, I was just talking to Carrie about this the other day, and, like, you know, Carrie's getting a lot better on the torch. It's just every little thing she does shows more control. Um, and, but I was telling her, I was like, you know, if you really want to, like, put that nail in the coffin or whatever, you know, what you got to do is, like, take a few weeks off work or whatever it is, and not just be in the studio for an hour at a time or whatever. You got to, like, spend a good couple of weeks or three weeks, whatever, just intensely on the torch, fucking 8, 12 hours a day doing simple drills. I'm actually going to, like, come up with a series of... Maybe you of, said two uh, hour, two weeks earlier. I did, but I'm just... Two-week two boot camp. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> two weeks I think is, is good, but if you can really... <laughs> I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that, like, the more time you spend on it in the beginning, the better while you're developing those fundamentals and... Just kind of like your brain is learning what's going to happen, you know? Like you want your brain to be ahead of the glass. And that doesn't happen until you kind of have like a mental model of what's going to happen. And then right? I think you need to build up some muscle memory too, yeah? Well, there's muscle memory, there's stabilizing muscles that you can build up as well. And all of those things come together into this ability to truly control the glass when it's hot. Um, but I really think it's so important to um you know, like I said, like a good couple of weeks of just intense drills day in and day out. I mean, pulling stringers for an hour, doing a thing where like you blow a bubble out and then condense it back to tubing and blow it out. You do that for fucking two hours. Then you move on to this. 
just all activities that get your hands talking to one another and, you know, inform your brain's ability to, like, predict the glass before it happens. You know, it's like Wing Chun Kung Fu or whatever. A lot of these things are, are predicated upon being, like, you know, they do those drills uh, where their hands and arms are constantly in contact with the person that they're sparring with. And that's to build sensitivity and, like, you really start to feel what the other person is going to do, you know, to, and, and you're able to react to it innately, you know, without thinking about it. You're not like, oh, that guy's about to punch me with his left hand at this angle. Your brain just feels what the, the angle that they're about to come at. And then it, it, that's the thing you want to be at that level of like glass kung fu. You know, seriously, like feeling the glass and understanding what's going to happen, you know, before you have to think about it and have some fucking mental debate or whatever because you know once you're doing that you're already behind the ball so you know just something to think about um the more time you can spend in the beginning developing that sensitivity is what's going to truly inform your ability to shape glass and manipulate glass and work glass later and then eventually all that shit just becomes pretty much second nature and then then you're doing crazy shit and letting the glass get weird and all sorts of random ass shit that you just could never get away with before that appears to be suicidal you know, it, there's all these factors that allow everybody to get away with it or to, to, to play looser and not lose anything. And, and to frankly, just have fun, you know, to where like the music's on, you're dancing, you're having a good ass time. You're not really fucking worried about what's going to happen, man. The glasses. I mean, Micah Evans was talking with me about this, man. And he was uh, talking about how hard it is to um, to even describe what you're doing with the glass once you've once you've gotten like a few years deep you know you just stop forgetting about like this mental thought well i'm gonna blow here and i'm gonna push from this angle and i'm gonna make sure i push with my left hand and i'm gonna do that i'm gonna heat this much all that shit goes away and you don't think about it and it becomes harder to talk about like um i, I i'm not uh, you know like the, the the teacher that a lot of these guys i've mentioned are but I feel like I've very much benefited from doing this show and talking regularly about glass process. And I've never like given myself the opportunity to, to let it become too magical. Cause that's what it is. Eventually you're like, well, I don't fucking know, man. I just made that motherfucker into a cone. And in the beginning it's like, well, how the fuck do you make the glass into a cone? This is crazy. Can I please make a cone? This sort of thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then later it just, you know, that's like the simplest shit. You're like, well, I just make my, I just, my hands just make a cone. And there's like a beautiful place in between when you know exactly how you made the cone, but you made it easily and all that. I guess you the just point inherently understand heat management. There's heat management and the the, the application of pressure. Uh, you know something that Matuskuki taught me. Um, he said that that pretty shaping glass is all pushing and pulling. And dude, the more I thought about that shit, the more I was like, God damn, that is actually true. Everything we do to the glass is pushing or pulling. Sometimes we're pushing or pulling with a tool. Sometimes we're pushing from the inside with air. But like every move that you do is just pushing and pulling on the glass. So like, I mean, all this bullshit just comes down to like, we'll get better at pushing and pulling. You know, sort of. But that's what it is. You have to build that innate sensitivity. And, um, you know, I, I, I guess my point here is just, to, to, you know, don't get discouraged in the beginning or, you know, just realize that there's like a mega light at the end of the tunnel, you know, in terms of um, this shit getting a lot more fun and easy and things happening the way you want. All right. Now, here the homie's going to do like that straight U bend for the return drain. And look at this. Look how much glass he heats versus the actual bend. He heats a huge <laughs> section. Look at that. Now, when you do these bends, man, always bend upward so that gravity can kind of droop the bottom tube or the bottom of the tube, right? Instead of going the other way and gravity is going to be pulling all that material in the middle together and shit, it just doesn't flow the same way. So when you do these bends, you always want to bend up just the way we saw Freak do. That was like a really classic bend, so don't be afraid to like watch that again or whatever it'll be. Check it out. He's just duplicated his hand torch. What's that? He's oh, just yeah. duplicated <laughs> his hand torch in glass. That's pretty funny, yeah. Good one, <laughs> Good one Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so like I said, that's going to form that return drain. 
And yeah, so much of you know that he did that so fast. That was like that was that was skilled, but just it's important to note how much glass he got hot, like way more than was actually it directly in the bend, you know? And that's what allows for that smooth shape and just for a second, he was like, man, is that guy still filming me? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> all right. And I think here, Didn't like get any of that look. Yeah. All right. Now look at the angle that he popped that hole at. It's in a very specific position. So, cause it's going to get tagged onto like that top hole or whatever, as I recall. One of them's going on like the top hole and one of them's going on the side. Look like he wasn't maybe happy with that actually. And these things happen. As much as we're ever talking about how he motherfucker turns into like uh freaking James Copperfield or whatever. Uh <laughs> like it it doesn't always go perfectly, you know. Sometimes you just gotta take a second try, man. It happens. It happens to everybody. I've watched so many of the best fuck up, and I, I know that's like not necessarily the way I'm supposed to present things, you know? I'm really here to just put like a super positive light on our industry, but like, there's just none of those people want you to think otherwise, man. Like, it, th these things happen, but it's it's the recovery that change, you know, is the difference. And I was joking earlier about how like I, I I'm like, well, you know, you can't freak out when something goes bad. But, you know, again, it's if you don't know what went bad or how to fix it, it's I, I understand. All right. So here this was that side drain. Let me shut up. You see that he got him hot enough. And then he was like, you know, just a good angle to, to tack one and then hit the other. Now he's got him tacked. And it's not a perfect seal, but he's just got to get them uh, there and happy. And then he'll be able to get that other hole sealed over. Or ripped off, rather. And get this bridged up, and then that seal can be worked properly. So, you know, when you're doing these returns and these drains and such, it's a, a lot of what we were mentioning earlier about, like, knowing how long that janky handle or that janky seal can be. Like, how long it can survive. And he's in there. He's in the zone. It would have been better if he didn't have to do that hand torch move or whatever, but we're just nitpicking. It's totally fine, you know? And see, he, okay, so now he started with a really bushy flame there. You don't want to jump in on a seal like that that's janky with a uh, with a driving flame. See, now he added more oxygen. Another neat thing to notice there, kind of pro-level moves, man. Just come at it with a bit more of that bushy flame. It's still hot. It's not going to pop, but maybe it is, you know what I'm saying? So, like, be gentle with it, and that's one way. It's just, you know, control your hand torch by how much oxygen is in it, essentially, and how driving it's going to be. You know, as long as we're talking hand torches, I'll share another tip Mike and Nan shared with me that is so important. Um, and it's when you're doing these seals, uh, the angle that you hit it is so important. Like right now, he's not, he's just kind of drilling it directly. But oftentimes, the better angle is one where you're kind of glancing it from the side. And it's not drilling directly into the inside of the tube. You know, like basically like imagine that the angle where, where it hits the can that makes like almost like a 90 degree angle, right? So instead of drilling that angle directly into the crevice, uh, position the hand torch from the bottom so that it shoots up through the crack. Like as if it's riding in the crack, right? Ride the crack, you know what I'm saying? Um, but like riding that crevice allows heat to, to hit the crevice, but not like blast into the whole thing, you know, and that can often be a little bit brutal that can move too much material around. Um, and, and it, especially in smaller scale things that can really fuck up the seal underneath it. Mike Ganan is the dude doing fucking like, um, internal forearm climb things that like, you know, so it's like four seals on top of four seals that then have looping arms around and shit. The mother, this guy's insane. He's seriously one of the best scientific glass blowers alive. And you know, the angle of those seals is so important. And he taught me a lot of this when, when he was teaching me to work a lathe. And when you're on the lathe, if you're not going to take the piece out, like some of those angles are just the, the best way to get at it with that, you know, because your angles become a bit more limited, 
You don't got the piece in one hand and your torch in the other. The piece is fucking stuck on one axis, you know, and you just got to like flip it up and flip it down and to control gravity and that sort of thing. So your options become more limited, but that angle of approach with the hand torch thing, I've found so important even on the bench. And it's just, if you're trying to get that seal cooked out and especially clean that seal up, and there's like one, just one specific spot you're trying to move material around in that glancing heat instead of that direct heat can, can give you so much, just much more, um, a much more specific zone of heat as opposed to that blasting one that's going to radiate around the spot that you're hitting, right? The radiant heat's going to go around it in a circle as opposed to that glancing one where, you know, it's almost radiant heat itself because you're coming at it from the edge. Anyways, just something to think about when you're using that hand torch. Like, just don't necessarily get into the habit of using it at that one angle where it's straight drilling into the piece. It doesn't have to be like that all the time. And I don't even, I didn't realize that until I, you know, spent some time working with Mike. Here the homies pulling down more drainage type of thing. So just, you know, pay attention to how much he heated to pull that down and then how he reheated those little specific parts to uh, get it to uh, flow into the same diameter. The part that's cooling will kind of flow to the diameter of what's around it when you get the heat, the heat's right and such. So, Pardon me for a moment. Sure. really cook some material back there to form this piece. And, you know, I mean, that's just so simple, you know, even if you're making a spoon. Some of those, some of you guys out there, you know, and you're just getting started and it's like, well, why is my hole blowing too big? Or why is this? Or why is that? And most of the issues with the bowl come down to homies not condensing enough material back. And that was a really tiny version of it. But like, you know, you saw that like he really cooked a bunch of material back before he blew that bubble out. If it's going to go this way in diameter, it needs to squish in the other way first or it's going to get too thin. It's, you know, all just the mechanics of these things, but you know, just something to pay attention to, you know. I've been telling you guys stories about the the dumbest apprentice lately, right? This kid who was at uh, Redemption when I was there. <laughs> Not uh, ridiculous things he did, like cracking fifty punnies off on the edge of the bench, you know, and leaving all the devil's thumbnails on every single one. And another time, I almost knocked over a liquid tank because this idiot was supposed to sweep the floor, and he left a pile of glass garbage right in front of the fucking tank, and then just got to work and left it there. And like five hours later, I fucking slip on this pile of tra of glass, and like the tank almost like fucking went over. Anyways, well, okay, okay. The, <laughs> the way I remember how much glass to melt back uh, on a spoon, you know, because you got to condense back a certain amount of material, and I'll never forget it, man. My apprentice, man. Uh, shout outs to Fat Mike. You know, rest in peace. He passed away, and um, but he said to me. I don't want to give away the guy's name or not. I don't want to call this dude out, even though he's the dumbest motherfucker alive. But Dear like, God. I'm not gonna do it by name. But he was like, Good. he was like, all right, Mike, when you want to condense uh, the the bowl back, he was like, you need to do just about as much as that guy's dick. So I just imagine like a tiny penis that belongs to a really stupid guy when I'm doing the fucking pipe, you know? So just think of like, uh, you know, think of like. Why did like, we end up looking up those uh, those images that one day? I don't know. Not the not a question for the show. <laughs> it was Anyways. a funny reference. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, here's it. Remember. 
it looks like this disc hasn't gotten its perk yet or whatever or something or maybe it's popping the hole in that perk or hasn't gotten the <laughs> seal in the perk rather anyways yeah it's like i know it's like a bit silly but like that's what it is man so it's like not too much like you gotta like think of like a small penis like a thumb amount of fucking glass you know if the bowl's gonna be you know half that size it's gotta be like a like a finger man so just <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said he was straight clowning on that dude because that guy was a fucking moron he was doing the he would always do the dumbest shit it was he was it was how about it was like an audi belly button something like that okay. but that wouldn't be enough glass though oh. all right anyways all right enough about <laughs> That so guy. anyways yeah all right this so this is now, a really cute piece right now it reminds me of a teapot yeah well he's sealed on top of that uh the the perk right so you can see the perk down there if you look close mm -hmm. all right now that's bridged as well and yeah pay attention to those bridging structures you know it, it's it's that's pretty freestyle but that's so important to allow him to get that seal hiding out behind the flame now but you get the idea uh, he's able to use that hand torch and really get in there and just make sure it's got a good angle inside and out the other thing in my opinion that is really important with these seals is not having too much material and that's another thing that homies in the beginning you know, like, I feel like a lot of us come into it and we've maybe been, like, bamboozled a little by, like, uh, salespeople. They're like, yo, this glass is extra thick around the joint. It's going to be safe. Look, we can drill nails. We can hammer nails with it. Shit like that. Okay. And in a certain sense, I guess that's true. But... If you're not going to be using your bong to hammer nails or whatever, right? The the, <laughs> the more realistic approach. What else would you use? Yeah, I don't like, understand. <laughs> the the more reasonable thing um, is to have the walls be all super even. You you just simply don't want a bunch of excess glass in those ring seals, and and that's one of those beginner things. Whenever I see somebody like. My ring seals are all fucked up, you know, and, and it's always because they uh, didn't remove glass when they opened that hole. That's the biggest thing. When you pot, it's like a drywall, right? Like if you cut a hole in drywall, there's like a circle of drywall sitting on the floor. It's the same thing in glass. So like think about that circle of drywall and make sure you pull out a circle of glass. And then when you put your down stem in, you're, it's got that Maria or, you know, it can be a hollow Maria, it can be a solid Maria, it doesn't matter. But the, what matters is that where those two uh, walls of glass connect, there's not all this thick-ass glass where, like, you opened a hole and then reamed it out to the edge. And that leaves a ton of extra glass there. And that becomes super problematic. It's hard to cook back in fluidly. And it leads to stress. It, it cools too quickly and it sends cracks through the can. All that shit. It's all because people leave too much glass in that seal. And in this case, you know, this was a small scale example of it, but, you know, it's just so important to not have too much material there. And just something to yeah, think if about. Yeah, you, if you vary that wall thickness, you're going to have to anneal for like a super extra long time to even make it. Maybe. I mean, the thicker the glass, the longer you've got to anneal. Well, and yeah, it, and it if depends. there are variations in the thickness. Well, it's more about things cooling at the same rate, so you just need to give it a little longer if that happens, but it's just yeah, so yeah. not ideal, you know? And here's another one of these nice seals. He got those really good. That was a good fucking tack. Like, when we're talking about the second step being 40%, that was fucking, uh, that was, that was 41%. Goddamn. So, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, really, that was a good fucking tax seal. Like, and, and it probably happened that effortlessly because he did 40% in the first one. And now he's going to have an incredibly easy cleanup here. Like, this should not be a long section of the video. So, yeah. I really think that's a cool methodology. And it just gives you something to think about with all these different steps, you know. And are you making more work for yourself, you know, because you've not taken the, one of those previous steps properly or whatever it'll be. Um, that's just so important.
And yeah, I love I just love the shaping of this piece and all the different angles. Carrie's cat is like yeah, tuna she's... time. Open up this closet for me. Yeah. But yeah, with that bridge, he's able to really work that seal in. And I mean, these are two big sections at an interesting angle, you know, and that seal is going to provide all the support. So this really does need to be a good ass seal. Not that for someone like this, that's, you know, whatever. But when we're trying to think about this sort of thing in our own work, you know, like if, if you're going to have two heavy sections living together like this, you really got to get that seal proper. I do think that's a hornet tip with that that unique design that that they sell. Hmm. I could be wrong, but I don't think Blast Shield makes tips in that sh those shapes. That was my memory on this, at least. Now those are the two main types of tips for those hand torches. If you're not familiar, there's like blast. I mean, you just use the ones it comes with, but there's like blast shield that has like a five hole and a seven hole. And then there's Hornet. That's like, it's, that's like a one hole design. That's like 1.3 mil and then like 1.5 mil or something. Hmm. Those Hornet tips are really hot. They're really good for seals, stuff like that. The blast shield tips are a little more gentle. I find I have the five hole one, so it's a little smaller than the seven. Who's the manufacturer on Hornet? What's that? Who's the manufacturer of the Hornet? Is it Hornet? As, as far as I know, it's just Hornet. Yeah, it's not like mm -hmm. like Hornet presented by Griffin or whatever it'll be. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my homie Scott. God damn, I miss my dogs. One of them homies I'd be seeing in the hot tub in Vegas, you know, whatever it'll be. Man, I catch him at the bar. I like Scott Griffin a lot. His tools are dank, but he's a really nice guy too. Yeah. But yeah, if you guys are just getting into the show, <laughs> fucking, we were talking earlier, Melt is happening this year. Uh, assuming nothing disastrous really, ha you know, like, assuming the second wave of Corona and crazy in the fall or whatever it'll be. And then here's another one of these controlled pops because that angle, wow. it's going to connect to another piece there. It's like a floating bridge. So just, you know, notice how he really used that hand torch to hit a specific area and pop that hole at that super specific angle. Um. Anyways, yeah, melt is happening. And what we're watching now is partly, you know, thanks to the melt homies. This is this was the melt with the fam. So it was like melt collaboration with fam combustion for a cause competition. So like melt and fam did the competition together. Fam was the trade show. So huge shout outs to the Melt guys and uh, to Ross and Dave at ABR. And they are, uh, they really, they did an amazing job with this event. And I was really looking forward to like doing it again and helping build this momentum, you know, because it's, it's a great ass time. Um, but like I said, uh, we were talking about it earlier. There is going to be this virtual trade show here. All right now, it looks like he added more glass there. I think, is he going to pop a hole through it? Let's find out. Because I feel like maybe he just didn't think it was thick enough there. So he added a dollop of the same color. And if he cooks that all in, and then you can, it's like, uh, you can blow a hole through it. It's like doing a raised carb on a spoon. Think about it like that. I think that's what's about to happen here. You add that glass, and then it kind of just tubulates. I think maybe he wasn't feeling like there was enough glass there to give him that section to open. Yeah, look at that. He's blowing right through it. I'm telling you, there's so many cool moves here that are involved in accomplishing this piece. And, you know, giving the homie the specific, you know, approaches that he wants to every seal and that sort of thing. And little step like that is critical. We used to do that on the drop downs, you know. Because you want the the, the uh, joints to sit a little further out than you would get from your normal opening. Just a little pro tip if you make them drop downs. They used to be bread and butter, baby. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but... 
Look at that. <laughs> Josh is saying in chat, melt tickets are less than a stimulus payment. That's what I'm saying, man. Put them Trump bucks <laughs> where they belong. Melt's going to be lit. Um, the lineup, I for, like, like, we could pull this up. Um, like I, they, they announced on uh, the latest Breaking Glass podcast that Shaw is definitely still on as a headliner. That's awesome. I think, yeah. Um, let me see if they've got the current lineup on the thing. They do, yeah. Um, I mean, in addition yeah. to what you, what you yeah. know. Aquarius is apparently not going to, like, uh, make it because he's not going to fly from Japan during this shit, but apparently virtually everyone else is still, like, on deck as far as I understand it. Like, So it looks like torch level tickets are $1,100. Yep. And that, and that gives you... That gives you uh, access to a torch space and a spot in a cabin. All the meals are covered. I mean, it's everything. Melt is a summer camp for glass blowers, and your ticket is everything you need except for like beer and drugs. Not that we would allow drug use at Melt, but never, never. Um, and then the spectator level ticket is nine hundred dollars, and that includes all of that except all of for that the except torch. for a torch space. Yeah, but you can also like if you have a friend you'd like to stay with, you can let the homies know, and they'll put you in a cabin together. And you can also share a torch space, so one person can buy the torch space, one person buys the torch ticket. You know, and you split the difference, kind of thing. Yeah. All right, and check this out. Now one of these that section is getting bridged. Uh, to the other uh, tubing. And then that will allow him to work that seal in. Yeah, we kind of melt talked right through an important step, but sorry. And no, it's not your fault. I just <laughs> I just mean to say like like y'all know what happened there. He, he he tack sealed that one to the other and then he used a part that's going to be a permanent bridge in the piece uh, to to get that bridging done. And now we can really work that seal in. And I mean, I know we've been here for quite a while now, right? Watching this thing come together, commiserating about glass with my homies, whatever. <laughs> no, but like, um, it, isn't it amazing to really see this piece start to come together now after we've been bullshitting for like an hour and a half or whatever? Like, this is fucking awesome. That this piece is sick as hell. This thing, I mean, look at this thing. This represents like how Boro artists are pushing this medium forward. I think I'm not trying to take away from anything else. It's just like, man, Boro Boro glass workers are taking this medium in a whole nother direction that is just on a whole nother level of intricacy than anything other than maybe like scientific apparatus. You know, it's um, it's truly a special thing that we get to be a part of and. Uh, I'm so honored to be able to help document our industry and yeah, the, this life is a dream. I really can't wait to get back to it. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, um, I, I, I'm being slightly facetious. It, just getting to be here with you guys and, and have this, this beautiful time together every week. You know, it's like so much of my life didn't change as a result of this whole thing. But a big part of it did, and it's okay. We'll be back to that soon, and I really do hope to see a bunch of you guys at uh, Melt this year. L let the homies know eh, so we can really make sure that this happens and so that they can proceed with confidence. This piece is beautiful. Isn't it? This shit is tight, right? <laughs> it's so sick. A freaking fume comb hanging off the top part. It's all just so sick. All right, look at this. Look at this angle. It's like all about finding these angles of approach. That's the best you can do. You know, is find that angle that allows you to hit that. All right, and here's a joint. I think this joint was like all faceted and stuff. So it, it, it came pretty much like this. We didn't miss anything. This was done at home or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, here also again gorgeous. is this like, yeah, but here again is this controlled opening. You know, even a little seal like this, I was talking about removing material. Same thing he did right there. He just, he pulled some material away so that when this thing opens up to this little tiny hole, there's not a ton of extra weight there or anything. It's, that's just so important. And like I was mentioning, I know a lot of us come into it thinking like thicker is better. Why wouldn't I want a thicker seal? 
And you don't. You want an even seal. Your piece itself isn't thin, so having a seal that matches that weight is not like a crime. It's still all going to be, be just fine, you know? Having extra thickness there, though, is, is just simply not a, a benefit, you know? All right, here we go. I think uh, here's where we're going to get into like an additional um, plumbing step. I think he's going to seal this one on directly. See that? It's like that 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 butt seal or whatever. It might not be a butt seal at that offset angle, man. I'm not like uh, keep it forward with the. There's all we need like Mike Souza to be like, well, it's actually called an off axis, whatever it'll be. <laughs> but like, <laughs> um. But this is what it is. He did that initial rough seal with both holes open, and now he's going to terminate this tubing. He's going to pull that over to where it needs to be and then do a Jesus seal. As I, I think that's what's about to happen. I'm going to bridge him up first. Let me not get ahead of myself. But our Lord and Savior is about to enter the seal building. <laughs> He does have a look. Well, I meant the seal, but Freak also does have a bit of that. He does His have hair like a, could be six inches longer, but yeah, like a wise man in the desert yeah, yeah. look for sure. <laughs> <laughs> About to sell me wares for my journey or some shit. All right, and so you'll that's... thank him later. Oh yeah. Well, speaking of thanking him, you guys, this shit is amazing. I cannot express my appreciation enough uh, to Freak for uh, putting on this show and being so kind as to allow me to to capture this and you know bring it home for you guys. Like I said, we're gonna do a special that features a bunch of the other artists, um, but this is one where like I, I had Carrie by my side, so I felt comfortable just being like, all right. Do you mind if I film your entire piece? And he was like, oh, man, fuck yeah, do that. And uh, and here we are. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's just so nice to have Carrie by my side because it really did free me up to, to focus on this and give us this incredible show. All right, now here's what I was mentioning, okay? He soaked a bunch of heat into that tube enough so that he could kind of move it fluidly. And he just kind of grabbed it, right? And see that? And he just shook that punny off. But, like, it was just like that curve earlier. He heated up, like, almost the entire thing so that it would fluidly curve to where he wanted it. And, yo, this is the same step, man. Go all the way back to Torch Talk 33. You know, we were talking with Vertigo Glass. And it's the same exact step of doing that one seal where the hole is open and then heating that whole tube and pulling it to where you want. And then you do the Jesus seal. And that is... A, a critical methodology. Most dudes who are doing really, really nice, like awesome looking recyclers, like this is how they're doing it. The how did one you drain... remember that was Torch Chuck 33, by the way? I, I just keep, because it was like 33 is the COE of Boro. So I just kind of remembered what we did that episode. We did like a... Uh, <laughs> like, Sorry. It's yeah. very impressive. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah, anyway, so here it is. Okay, these Jesus seals, um, they involve getting... All right, the, the real trick here is getting the two pieces the same distance as the walls. Okay, and so that when the walls blow together, there's very little material in between. Does that... I, I hope that makes sense. If the spacing between the two sections is the same as the wall weight, when the walls blow open together... What could be left in the middle if you get that material spread out, right? And that's the trick. So you blow them together and keep doing it such that the seal gets wide enough that the material flows to the edges of that. And at a certain point, it gets so thin in the middle that that shit just pops and the material distributes out. And that's my best description of a Jesus seal. Um, there's amazing video on the ASGS page on Facebook where Mike Souza talks about doing them. Uh, Dustin Revere has a video where he shows like a practice methodology where like you make a U-bend 
and then just do Jesus seals all between them. So again, if like if you have a piece of tubing that's like you know like five mil or whatever, you know, you want to do that U bend so they're like ten mil apart, so that the two five mil walls blow open and form you know they meet right in the middle, if that makes sense. So it's all about not having too much material in the middle or whatever, and having the distance such that the walls form a natural kind of even amount. And then if you blow them out a little bit bigger than their original diameter, like I said, it steals the material from the middle. And then when you condense it back down to the original diameter, it's now, you've in theory got, you know, the same wall weight on either side and nothing in the middle. So that's just some of my thoughts on a Jesus seal. I, I, you should really watch that ASGS video and uh, even Dustin Rebeers on his channel. Um... Mike Souza, man, with the ASGS, like you really want to hear him talk about it. But again, he, like the Jesus the, seal, what's that? Does he call it a Jesus seal? Yeah, and actually, we mentioned Micah Evans earlier when I was talking about some methodology stuff or whatever. But he actually coined that term, and then Mike Souza repeated it and kind of made it canon. Because, like Mike, you know, I all, all due respect, Micah Evans, is a fucking glass god, but he just can't like coin terms on his own. But, like, if he coins a term and then fucking Mike Souza with the ASGS, the American Scientific Glassblower Society, is like, we call this the, the, the Dieter seal, the blowout seal, or the Jesus seal. Yep, yep. I'm telling you, that means that that motherfucker just officially made that thing, you know, one of the terms. That's what it takes. You know what I mean? Like, two people got to turn the key. Got to be like, glass god, and then, like, scientific <laughs> glass god. Like, they both turn the key, and boom. Now they're called Jesus seals. So, no disrespect to my religious homies. It's all love. Because it's so impossible. Like, what the fuck just happened? I'm Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus seals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something happened. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know, man. Those are, like, like my thoughts on Jesus seals and why they happen. You know? And it's so much about those wall weights. And, like I said, blowing it out beyond that initially so that it steals it from the middle. Oh, shit, that was carrying a background. Um, and then, <laughs> but when it when it condenses back, in theory, you're going to have the original wall weight minus that bullshit in the middle that, you know, should have been very thin from the beginning if you got that spacing right. It's so much about that spacing relative to the wall weights. Because if the spacing isn't right relative to the wall weights and you have too much material there, it'll take fucking ages to get that membrane to open. And if they're too thin, you're not going to get have enough material there. Which is better than the other way. Because if you don't have enough material, you can always add more. You can grab a stringer and fucking lace it up. Whatever you got to do. There's possibilities when there's not enough glass. But if there's too much glass, it's like, ugh. It's going to be very hard to pull material away from that area without completely undoing the seal. If that makes sense. Or undoing your attempt to make the seal. So anyways, just some, just some bullshit about Jesus seals. Volume control. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're cleaning up the bottom here already. Now that all those returns are made and the seals are done and not all of them yet, the joint's still going to seal onto that post that's sticking out. But you can see now we got that bottom really nice. Oh, look at this piece. Man, my man has been doing some amazing faceting. So here's a piece that's going to go on that's, you know, I think the thumbnail had him doing the seal here. I was, I really like that shot because it just has the whole piece nearly finished, you know, and you can see my man doing his thing and his faceted pieces looking gorgeous. Everything about it is pretty. Do you think he fire polished, a fire polished that piece when he was done faceting it? I don't know. Faceting at this level, those guys usually do it with cerium. But it, you know, the, the the angles on the the facet seem a little soft. I don't know. It all looks... what made it, me think. I don't know. It looks super crisp to me. Okay. We are going to have to disagree there. That it, facet It could looks, be my monitor. It could be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing it not full screen over on my end, but, you know, I'm watching it in uh, the broadcast software, and I was there in person too, so my memory of it was like super crisp. It looked like like he had not flame polished it. Gotcha. I could be wrong though. I definitely. I was could be wrong. just curious. Yeah, yeah. Go, don't be asking about flame polish. No, I'm just playing. 
mm. just fucking around. Oh, okay, look at this. This is a cool look at this. He's giving it a really like squared off look, y'all. Do y'all see that? Kind of rolled around the edge of the tube with the Marver and then gave it a little press. And gave it like this flat look. Almost industrial or whatever. Look at that. Boom. Pop. Now, this one, he didn't remove material because he wants that extra spacing. But he blew it out such that he did it in that controlled way that it didn't just pop a hole and immediately cook the edge back, you know? He popped it such that it, it grew out the, the bubble, if that makes sense. So it came up a little bit and gave him that little extra distance. And look at that. See, sometimes you just got to do the best you can to get that angle. You know what I mean? And that was one of those times where, like, you know, it, you don't have a perfect angle on it. Sometimes it's not going to be perfect, but, you know, in you get in there with your hand torch and do what you got to do, and you're going to get it right, you know, sort of thing. And I'm going to step away for just a second. Carrie, you talking through the seal. Sure, sure, we'll do. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I was just sitting here wondering. I thought he just opened the tube underneath that. So what's he going to do there? Like a fancy carb cap or something. So yeah, 157 people watching now and we've got 54 likes. So that's that's pretty decent. The freak comes by later though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this piece is amazing. <laughs> That's the joint. They're telling me what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you. I heard 150 something people are watching. That's incredible. Yeah. I, uh, I really appreciate everybody. Who to tunes in and makes this a party and it means the world to me that you know that more of you than ever are tuning in here in 2020 um I, this thing is always going to be pretty niche you know we don't uh i'm not like yeah here's the dab of the week and you know like, nothing against that i just i we we're not trying to cultivate an audience of necessarily uh consumers as much Nothing but love and respect for, you know, the glass consumers who are here joining us to get a window into our world. But this is so much about documenting glass process for glass workers, you know, and um, man, to, to have this many of you here with us and making this thing a party for everyone in the chat. That's just crazy. I, I really appreciate y'all. It really means the world. I, thank you so much. I really, you guys are the best. All right, here's my man. A really, really tight seal there. He took the time to bridge it on up. And now he's just going to work that seal in and make sure it's really clean. But again, so much predicated on you know, those little steps. Like when he opened that hole in, in the bottom of the joint, you, know, you saw him remove a little material to make sure it wasn't going to be extra thick there. All these little things add up to this incredibly clean piece and... What a pleasure. Uh, I, I love what I get to do. The fact that so many of you guys are here enjoying it. Maybe you're not. I'm being assumptive there. I hope y'all are enjoying it. I'm just playing. But uh, the I, fact I that you... I think they are. Based on yeah, the comments, I think they yeah, are. Yeah. Um, it's just... I, I try to express this, you know, every show, how this is a, a circular thing. It's like, because you guys tuned in when this show wasn't, you know, it was just me and the boys getting crunk, you know? It gave the opportunity to share so much of our industry. And now that even more of you are here at this time, you know, it, it, it just, it's all one aspect feeds another. 
and if I feel like everybody wins, these events win, the artists win, and and our community gets to win, and I mean, and glass as a fucking medium wins. You know what I mean? Like, th there's never been a time in glass where it's been so well documented by me and others, and I really, I I just think this is what what we all deserve for a hundred reasons, and I'm so happy to be able to to help execute that you know for our community and but so much of it is because you guys are here making it this beautiful thing and enjoying this content and you know it's it's never going to be like a cat video where a million people watch it you know but that that this many of you guys are here having a good time together and making this an opportunity for our world to be just a little bit smaller that that's that shit's awesome i don't know to get all under my own thing but I, I love what i get to do and you guys make it possible so i just wanted to acknowledge this and not just in some some fucking fake way you know we're like i love you guys i want to be very specific about how this you know it's because you guys are all here that makes this all possible in an extremely granular way so yeah, much love you guys much love to everybody tuning in all right, here we go. We got a disc about to go on. He set up those posts so we could, you know, have like an attachment place. And those were already happy and connected to this disc. Uh, it looks like it's got some faceting and such. So yeah, I imagine he, he wants to keep that flame off of there. So, you know, it was important to like add that post with control. And... um. You know, if if it gets bridged here, if not, whatever, it looks like both sides are going to get tacked. So it's like one side will act as the bridge for the other. But what's most important is that uh, because he sealed the post to the piece beforehand, he only has to do this, like, drilling on the piece itself away from that faceting and stuff. So my opinion there, he's he did it that way, not the other way around. Because he could have, like, added the little posts, you know, to the piece, too, I guess. There's, you could do anything anyway, pretty much, you know. It's all algebra or whatever. But in this case, his approach allowed him to work on the piece side, not the attachment side that has all those nice facets. This piece is fucking awesome. It really is. What a pleasure to get to watch this come together. Huge, huge mega shout outs to Freak. I mean, what a chill guy. Like I said, man, and to do put on an absolutely amazing party for everybody who came out to FAM and he's been doing this for years for everybody who come out to Glass Roots. I I can't thank him enough and just kind of acknowledge, you know, what he did, man. It's a it, the party was so nice, and just getting to watch this, incredible. Huge, huge, huge respect and appreciation to Freak. All right, here we go. Bam. Now that whole bridge structure just was like, peace. So now he's going to have to like quarter this guy out or whatever, right? So all right, I guess when I say quarter, if, if you're not familiar, that means like just hitting about a like 25% of the seal at once, a quarter of it, you know, at a time. And that way, when you've got like an attachment like this, you know, like you're you're kind of using the other two, the other three fourths of it, or whatever, two thirds, whatever you've got there. Um, that is kind of forming the bridge. You know, when you've got a connection this scale of solid glass, you know, you can get away with that. You can get away with that on all sorts of things, but it's a lot easier if it's you know, solid glass there. But yeah, what a what a gorgeous piece. And that disc on the side just sets it off completely. <laughs> Good lord. I was resting on that heat pad. I think my dog Acadian Glass sells those, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And yeah, just hitting the very specific segments of that uh, seal at a time. 
So it doesn't necessarily need to remain bridged, you know, if you're doing it like this. Yeah, what a pleasure to get to see this come together, though. You know, it's not often you get to see the entire construction of a piece like this. Look at those facets. God damn. Yeah, huge, huge thanks again to Freak for letting me capture this process and see this incredible piece come together. But it feels like it was like a week ago, you know, but like, I remember when he was like coil potting the sections for this, like, what? The <laughs> Can you believe those were coil pots just a minute ago? Like, it's crazy. This piece really is. And just the whole methodology here and the way he built this out is just something special. And, and you know, it, it, just tuck that shit away if you're not ready to work this way, you know, like there might come a time when this makes the most sense. If not right now, fine. But, you know, like, just, this is, like, a just a huge thing. So many cool little details about this and things to learn. All right, we're about to mouthpiece this thing. All right, remove that tube, and now it's a matter of just kind of pulling this this material out. Just doing it in a controlled way. He's got that length kind of um, not quite as lasered up as before, but still pretty lasered up. You know, got some triple mix going here pretty hard, giving it a really sharp, sharp profile. So we can heat a really specific amount of that piece, you know, to form that mouthpiece. Now it's just a matter of rounding it out and making it nice and flush. So yeah, a few of these steps. <laughs> All right. God damn. Yeah, right? That shit is awesome. What a pleasure to see that shit happen. Huge, huge, huge shout outs to Freak. Yo, check this out. They had this fucking crazy lit uh, thing here, ABR. <laughs> and you can see all the, the background, the melt with the fam stuff. Huge shout outs to, to ABR and fam and the melt homies and every all the sponsors of this event. They made it possible. Clouds. Yeah, now this is Madison. If you were with us in the beginning, I mentioned I, I before we left town, I just had to go take some, some time lapse shots because it was so beautiful here. An incredibly just chill and beautiful city on the water. I, I identify with that. I've almost always lived in cities by the beach. Uh, you know, my Until life. now. <laughs> Until now. Yep. Yep. Now I visit cities by the beach. And you can just see all these all these different people taking advantage of the the water there and uh, these clouds, man. And this was uh, the Marana Terrace, right? Moana Terrace? No, no. What is it? Monona. Monona. I'm sorry. Okay, Monona Terrace, and a, a very beautiful spot where they hold this event. Um, this is the deck on the top, and I, yeah, I just thought this was a super beautiful place and a super beautiful city. Gorgeous flowers up there. It's a little silly, but I thought this was really nice, and I just want to give you guys a little bit of a uh, idea of where you're at. And sometimes, you know, we also happen to be in beautiful places while we make beautiful things. So, I don't, I don't know. I thought this was really pretty. So, I was like, no, Carrie, we can't leave yet. I'm going to film for fucking two hours up here. <laughs> and this was the second time lapse that I took from the like other side. Like I said, side. I was gathering seeds. So, no, I was, no, Carrie, I'm playing. Cool. Yeah, no, Carrie was totally. Carrie is. I'm a flower girl. More than accommodating of my, <laughs> my ridiculous. Uh, like I said, mission from Glass God to document our industry and. And just share this world with you guys and you know i it, it's like I, I wish everybody could be at all of these things but that's just not a reality so it, 
yeah what a beautiful spot this is this city and yeah there was like this synchronized jet like water skiing show that like, one of the days there there's all sorts of stuff going on over here it was it was pretty wild there's even a dude just swimming in there to have a thing <laughs> it was amazing um yeah huge shout outs to everyone involved and guys, these companies that you're going to see for like like 60 seconds, uh, they all pitch in every month and help me uh, get to all of these shows and take the time to, you know, really edit this content properly and make it possible to, to see a piece like this come together, you know, in, a, in an hour and 45 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Um, I really, I, most of these cats, you know, th these are all my friends and... Like I, I love these companies. They, they, they've all been important in my path as well. Lingen Hot Glass. We were going to have some amazing classes there in this year, but now it's, it's going to happen next year. Now it's going to happen gonna be next like year. Now, super, yeah. Super, super prepared. <laughs> I'll see y'all in the Midwest in 2021. Trust me, there's going to be some stuff that'll be worth your while. Um. But yeah, huge shout outs to these companies and some of you guys pitching in on Torch Pass. Uh, it really does mean the world uh, that I get to, you know, go to all these places. And we're, we're like, well, I don't know, it's, I was mentioning earlier, somebody had asked, like, are you compensating these artists with exposure books or whatever? But um, the point being is this: the entire structure is public and we're like just at the edge of sustainability. Like there, there's no extra, this isn't like some big money business where I'm making a bunch of money and not like paying anybody. It's not like that. This, we're just on the edge of this thing kind of paying for itself. And, uh, it means the world, you know, all these companies pitching in and all that, but like, I don't want to ask too much of anybody. I want, want this to be kind of, you know, some almost like a public broadcasting type of thing where a bunch of people pitch in and make it possible, but you know, it's not any one person or entity is telling anybody what to do any of that shit um homies uh go ahead and throw a number into that chat room uh one through 200 because we're definitely going to do a giveaway but yo I, w I had mentioned in the beginning of the show um we did these stickers uh glass artist against fascism uh michael korfoff uh sloth king glass uh did this design and i i was like can we print this for the packs and he suggested kind of raising uh, using it as a fundraiser and uh, i i actually really identified with that i like i like that idea a lot um and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make this donation live i don't always make the donations live but in this case just wanted everybody to see where their money was going and I wanted to take a moment to shout out um, the Equal Justice Initiative. Um, this this is a, a really just take a moment here. They're committed to ending. Uh, let me about. There we they're, go. They're committed to ending mass incarceration and excessive punishment in the United States, to challenging racial and economic injustice, and to protecting basic human rights for the most vulnerable people in American society. Um, this thing, like their Charity Navigator, rated like a hundred out of a hundred. Uh, there's an HBO special about the person who formed this. Uh, I think this is a really amazing cause and um, that's we sold 40 of these packs so far. So um, I'm going to eat the fees or whatever. We're going to go ahead and make a $440 donation to these guys right now. Nice. And yeah, that's because you guys scoop these packs. We'll do another, you know, down the road or whatever. Um, I don't, I've never actually done. All right, check it out. So we'll do other do 440 well we'll keep it out of that we'll just donate the money i am legally a doctor i purchased it from a <laughs> spiritual church 
so I can marry you. I paid for the right to say that. Uh, I I can marry your pets. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I'll, I will do whatever. Um, let me grab my uh, thing here. I might have to move this screen for just a second. So yeah, everybody in chat, you're doing a great job of policing, as it were, each other. For, that was happening for, for numbers. <laughs> numbers. <yeah. laughs> if somebody's picked your number, make sure and let them know that they should pick another one because yeah, the second um, person to pick a number is not going to win. And likewise, if you're picking like three numbers or two numbers even, and we discover it, you will not win. So one number per person. Everybody's like enjoying my. Uh... Oh, whoops! Did I accidentally click us off of that? All right, here we go. So. Hey, did everybody get that credit card number? Yeah. <laughs> um, just saying. Yeah. And your address. You're just letting them know where we live, too? Baby. 3% of this shit. What's this? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it is 1 through 200, right? Clack. There it is. All right, so awesome. um, I'm not going to share it on Facebook. I'm not that type of dude. We just did the motherfucker live on the air, but whatever. Um, yeah, so there we go. I uh, Really huge shout-outs to everybody who scooped. Um, and thanks to Sloth King. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, huge shout-outs to Sloth King Glass. And, yeah, these are the, the – well, this might be – this is like we're going to give away some of these sticker packs or whatever. Um and yeah, man, you know, I've got hella milli chunks here. So like uh, for a grand prize winner, I'm going to throw in like, like a fat ass chunk of a uh, dragon eye milli cane or whatever. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's not focusing prop the best, but whatever. Um, we know what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got like a grand prize with some hella things. Um, yeah. Did everybody get their numbers in? Has that happened? Um, I think so. It's. It's uh, we're all commenting to each other now, so I'm right. pretty sure. Very good. Well, again, thank you to everybody who scooped uh, those packs of the Glass Artists Against Fascism stickers. Um, those are on the way. Uh, like the first batch, like went out yesterday, and then like the last like twenty of them or whatever that had ordered, I got out in the mail today. So you guys should all have those by the end of the week. Um, I snuck some goodies in there. I'm not trying to like lure anybody into doing something, you know, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> those are all coming with some nice nice shit, and yeah, uh, let's go ahead and give away a few sticker packs. Some of them with some fat ass Millie and stuff. Hell yeah! All right, uh, pull this. Go to random.org. My generous donation. I just play, but thank you guys seriously for making this possible. Um, I know, like, I don't know. I mean, it's a little weird because, like celebrities or whatever man they'd be donating like one hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever it'll be but like that 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 we shit is vision four hundred and forty thousand dollars yeah we did no. awesome yeah like that's like like johnny come lately shit you know that's um we'll keep doing this and you know it it, it smaller don't it, that shit really matters and it's just we did this together and I did it without having, and Michael did it, you know, without having to be like, oh, would you guys just please give money? I hate that. I do, that is, if you guys ever catch me doing philanthropy like that, then, you know, something's wrong. I've like hit rock bottom. What are we doing now? We're just picking, we're about to pick numbers, <laughs> but I'm just bullshitting about no, how, I, the, I, how, I wanna, how are we going to start begging for money now? I don't know. It, <laughs> you know, it's just so important to me to make it fun for everybody. That that's the thing for me. I, I, I just begging for money is lame. Totally. Uh, that nothing. It, it, there's times when that that makes sense, but most of the time it doesn't, and for us it doesn't for sure. So okay, um, what what happened? What the fuck is stalling. this? I was just stalling for time because some people were still uh, picking numbers. Oh, they're still all right. Well. But I think I think we're good. I think what, we're What did I say? One through two hundred? You did. All right. I think it's time to pick these numbers. And then y'all want to play some games? If everybody has any ideas for games, pop them in, because otherwise we'll just jump into whatever I want to play. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is this is gonna be for the pack with fucking mad milli extras. Uh fuck it. I got a whole little little thing here. 
They'll all come with milli extras, but that first pack is going to come with that fat piece of the dragon I came because the rest of them are a little smaller. <laughs> all right, clickety-clack. Who's got 19? What's up? Where is... Uh... All right. I do see a 19, but no, it was nope. part of the 193. Yep. All right. Clickety clack. 65. Nope. I see nothing. All right. 186. No. No. 63. Nine. 55. Ooh, shit. Oh, Rich Grant. Rich. All right. Rich, that's you, dog. Hit me up at Mike Mason at gmail.com fast. Lucky man, Rich. Yes. Yeah. Email Mike now yeah. or forever. Hold your peace and don't win a prize. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to pick another winner and then we'll pick more winners during the games. <laughs> All right. Did it seriously pick 200? It did. I see a couple people with 200. I see my man, Greg Hoke, the homie. Yeah. And then Reg and the Evil Veg Patch. It looks like somebody even told Reg that it was picked before. So that's definitely my man, Greg. Yeah, uh, I Greg, see Greg at the beginning. Yeah, that's you, man. Greg, hit me with a shipping address, my dude. Uh, Mike Mason at gmail.com. And yo, let's uh let yeah, let me uh let's get some steam action going and we'll load this game up. If nobody else is gonna has a suggestion, I think we're gonna jump into bracketeering. <laughs> Always a winner. Always a winner. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, here we go. Which one has bracketeering? I do not recall. It's this one. Here we go. All right. So yeah, if you guys are stick around for games, it's always a fun time. We're playing some Jackbox.tv games, and to play, you need two windows. If you're watching on a TV, then your phone can be your second controller. If you're on a computer, you can just open two windows. One of the windows is to be your controller, and one of the windows is what we are watching right now. Yeah. And, uh... I think there's like what 16 players in this and then some audience members too yes many players in this one many many we say many many All right, here we go. So you got to throw this code in at jackbox.tv. You only get three letters in this game. Oh, so make yes. sure your name is the cool. The sex. Like sex. <laughs> All right, or so our room code is J-Y-N-Q. Excuse me. Sorry, that volume got a little loud earlier. It's all I'm very unpredictable. Was I really loud again? No, no, no. I mean the game. Oh, okay. Yup. We are on my new system, you guys. The new computer. Everything has really come together. I've now got my second monitor wall mounted. Everything is... The I don't control know. control room. Yeah. I, I cannot express to you guys how much more comfortable my setup is here now for editing and everything. That desk um, you were using yeah, is ridiculous. I know uh, Torch Pass has been a little slow this month, but I'm about to drop a bunch now that I'm really able to work in comfort here, for real. So don't worry about that. I'll, I'll be dropping some dank shit on you guys soon, and I'll be getting into the studio soon as well. Um, I've got materials on hand to do a couple different dragon eyes and a couple different octopus eyes, because people keep asking for both of those. So those people will be satiated soon. Hell yeah, it looks like everybody's showing up. COE, that's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. And yeah, if you're not watching the show live, skip that shit to the end. There we go. That's my man, ass. Ass. Man. <laughs> it's the ass man. Oh, yeah. Ass to ass, or whatever. <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> took me like eight games before i started remembering to put in a dank three-letter name so you got it though you got yeah, it yeah i did eventually yes get it 
<laughs> I'm representing the 707. It's Northern California. Oh. For those All right. that are not, not aware. People are still coming in. It makes me feel like some homies are watching the show a little delayed. Yeah, really make sure that it's slider possible. is like all the way over to the right. Sex is the VIP. Sex sells. Right, I'm going to let this go for just a little, little longer. I'll be right back and then we'll start the game. Three more spaces for anybody that might want to pop in. Anybody that's thinking about leaving. Oh my gosh, look at that. 84 people watching and 84 likes. That's amazing. Yeah, all right, we're doing it. We're doing this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, snuck Ooh, in. There's two more spaces. Three, two, one. I really want ice cream. <laughs> We've got big fun <laughs> waiting to be unleashed. We'll be posing some of life's most important questions. Your answers will be paired off in a no-holds-barred tournament. And your votes will determine which answers advance in the bracket. As we whittle down to our championship winner, this is Bracketeering. I'm sending the topic of our first bracket to your devices now. The most effective cure for the hiccups. Enter your answers now. Type in the best, most winningest answer you can think of and hit send. If your answer wins the entire bracket, you'll be rolling in moolah. By the way, you can join the audience and play along by going to jackbox.tv and entering the room code. Hell yeah. That's right. Yo, if anybody out there is waiting on a prize from a previous show, I just got a message from a homie. Um, shoot me an email, tell me what it was that you won, and, uh, and I'll try and get that out. I know there was, like, there's, like, a, probably a few people waiting on things that just got lost Time's in the shuffle, out. so. Just drop me a line. Your answers are being paired off into one-on-one -on -one matchups. That means it's time to sidle up to the prediction table. On your device, you'll see one of the upcoming matchups for this bracket. If you can predict the answer that will get the most votes, I'm you'll earn some sweet, say. sweet moolah. Oh, and don't forget, if you don't think your own answer has a chance of victory, you can still grab some cash by predicting the correct winner. Time's running out. Oh, prediction table time is up. Let's dive into our first bracket. Never thought I'd see this matchup. Use your device to vote on which you think deserves to win. But don't forget, if you change your mind, you can change your vote. <laughs> Get those last second votes in now. Oh, wow. A textbook squeaker! <laughs> Any prediction winners just made a killing. Uh, Our next matchup. This matchup was bound to happen. Another hold your breath. This must be a thing. This game, really. <laughs> it's really going back and forth. But care was only one way to find out, I mean. I guess. <laughs> this might be a photo finish. Does that mean like getting fisted or doing oh, the fisting? Because next time I got the hiccups, baby, I'm going to... Okay, I'll step up and do it, I guess. Uh, not do it, I mean get it done to you. Well. All right, Mike. If I must, I will definitely fist your asshole. Like, baby, no. 
<laughs> a hot dab. A hot dab, not, yeah. Not hot just dab. a regular dab? No, no. A hot dab is what usually causes the hiccups. Only a few so that's actually a pretty funny vote. answer. <laughs> These two heavyweights went back and forth. But they're gonna Man, I cannot believe Hot Dab there. beat out Blowjob. This is, you guys are a good crowd. We got a fucking great crowd tonight. <laughs> we won't be having multiple penis answers this game. Is that what you're saying? We'll probably have that too. I mean, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> no, like, where my ass eaters at? Or whatever, like, <laughs> toe pinching, low toe condensation. Definitely anal. Anal, anal will cure your hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be thinking about that. The running out on voting time. Well. <clears throat> Back and forth they went. Melting. Man, it's not been a good oh. night for ass play. <laughs> Before we get on to round two, it's time to make oh, another boy. prediction. <laughs> hey, you got a new matchup waiting for you on your device. Predict the one you think is gonna win. <laughs> the predictions are in. Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. It was touch and go for well, these two this answers last good. round. The struggle is real. Man. But which came first? Right. This one seems like it's over <laughs> before it's done. One's an out of body experience oh, and one's an inside your body experience. Stayed over. Just saying. <laughs> well, perhaps the fisting led to the out of body experience. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right. Yeah. <laughs> one more match to determine our finals. Two answers battle tested with tough first round matchups. <laughs> Such a funny answer. <laughs> <laughs> the lead keeps changing hands. It makes me actually want to try that shit. Like, somebody has the hiccups, like, well, let me hit <laughs> this fucking this rig. That's far yeah. too hot. <laughs> Here's the titanium <laughs> dish. <at> 900. <laughs> <laughs> and Whoa. now we finally decide what is the most effective cure for the hiccups. Damn, we got Tuffy right here. <laughs> oh, so, so tough. An upset in the making. <laughs> Caleb just popped in the chat. We were talking about you earlier, Caleb. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, Caleb. Thanks for making our time in Madison really, really extra chill. Our first winner. Wow, what a bracket. Let's see how the score shook out. Mm, sex ass and COE. Sounds about right. <laughs> May have been my own answer. I was speaking up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the blind bracket. We'll start with just the category. Name any store or recognizable restaurant. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and write the first thing that comes to mind. Mm. We'll okay. see the real bracket title after the answers are all or in. Or recognizable restaurant. Okay, remember, so this is the blind bracket where it's going to switch into something. I think it's going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what should be your grandma's last meal? Or, you know, or some bullshit like that. Or like, what's the worst restaurant to have sex at? Or something. <laughs> all of them? Time's running out. Any store. Bam. <clears throat> Snuck it Let's in. Let's see what this bracket is really about. Most likely to still be around 100 years from now. Oh, I got Time this. Time to get in those predictions. I won. I'm sorry, but I won. 
<laughs> okay. It's over. Mm -mm. I mean, there's some funnier answers, but... You want to be real, man? Fucking... Are you yeah. talking idiocracy? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there's I one voted, thing that's definitely going to be around in 100 hope. years. Let me tell I, you that. I voted for hope. <laughs> hope? Yes, Time's hope. That's not a store or a thing, though. What are you talking That's about? It's a feeling table. that you get Starting when you think off. of a brand or a, a store. Yeah. What? No, it was supposed That's... to be the name of the guy that sells LSD on the corner. <laughs> nice. See? That's a good hope. one. But I like... told you. Hope. I voted for hope. <laughs> LSD is going to be old in 100 years. There's going to be like future LSD. It's going to be all electronical. This one's looking over. Damn, that was a good answer, though. I gotta give it up. <laughs> Motherfucker. Gave me whiplash. Next up. The struggle is real. So like this answer, basically Walmart, probably. Get those but last second votes in now. The hope in me. Oh, it's roll. <laughs> Even though it's Here Amazon. We'll come back to Liza Minnelli. Let's see what's Is happening over answer? on the other side of the bracket. Nah, I've been knocked out early. I'm seeing this. I oh, thought Amazon. I'd go with the, the porn shop or whatever, and that didn't work because I got grouped in with the homies with selling acid, which is the probably the better answer. Wait a minute, there was porn in that? I, I totally missed it. Adam and Eve? Come on, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got some shopping to do then, girl. You know what I'm saying? No, okay, <laughs> all right. All right. More than Luke and <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's time to round out the brand. Amazon is going to be every time. company in a hundred years. Right? It yeah. is. That's a good answer. No one thought it would be this good close. <laughs> Wegmans is a, the uh, is a good out, I'm You know McDonald's would, ain't going nowhere. I would like a Wegmans. Wow, too but close yeah, to call. McDonald's, I mean, there's that support, whole movie about it. Like tapping on your device as fast as you can. Or was it Taco Inn? Or was it the same thing? Taco Inn. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely to be in Lincoln in a hundred years. Go on with our lives. <laughs> Before Would you like tater tots two, with your tortilla? To yeah. Taco Inn is a pretty random place here in Lincoln that claims they have the best tacos in town. It's totally bullshit, but... In a hundred years, Amazon will own McDonald's. It's that simple. So, that person who picked Amazon, man, they really fucking... That was a good pick. Time's well, McDonald's out. won't really be McDonald's anymore. It'll just be like everything. The predictions are in. The buffet. Let's jump back to our bracket no. for round two. Buffets are done forever now. Well, right, right, right. Not like buffet, but it'll be anything. McDonald's will just not be burgers and fries. It will be everything. Man, the LSD, that is such a great answer. Whoever picked that really does deserve a sticker pack. So it's, <laughs> it's over We're going to have to unthrone me somehow. This game. Get Decisive it now. victory. <laughs> I've really come to trust ass and COE when it comes to predictions. Both you know of these saying? answers have yeah, seen adversity true. before. Alright, well Amazon's gonna own McDonald's, obviously. That's so. exactly what I was saying, so Yeah. Just... Way to load that answer up. Oh, but apparently you weren't that convincing. Get those last second votes in now. I mean, it's not my answer, so I'm not trying to convince nobody. Oh, I understand. It's pure logic, but 
but the chances of McDonald's outlasting Amazon are n over at this point. Oh, hit that answer. Okay, there we go. The tie is broken. I'm going to miss the tie times. <laughs> And now the final face off. Which of these places is most likely to Amazon be versus LSD? Now? Which will it be? Could you imagine if Amazon sold LSD? See, I bet you that Amazon will own the guy that sells LSD on the corner. Right? It'll One be day. Amazon yeah, Amazon Basics LSD. <laughs> 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 One day it will be. Winner. But until then, the guy on the corner wins. <laughs> Good one, COE. Excellent. Let's That's how you play this. That's how you play board. bracketeering right there. Real talk. Dropping oh, my empty cans and shit. Empty cans? I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> And now for the bracket you've all triple been waiting blind. for. The triple blind. Triple bracket. blind. It's like this triple blown, you know what I'm saying? Every single <laughs> round. Let's start the triple with blown the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Name a cartoon character. Changes Who knows every what round. crazy twists and turns this bracket will take? Hmm. Time's running out. Let's see what we're dealing with. The most annoying cartoon character. Time to get in those predictions. All cash is doubled this round, so make these choices count. <clears throat> I got a chance here. I'll call it. We'll see what's up. <laughs> SED, I see you asking if it will let others join. Time's the next out. game will. You can be in the audience now if you enter the code, but the Time's next game, the new players table. can join for sure. Here comes trouble. I am on the edge of my seat. Only a few seconds left to vote. What show is Crack Horror Star on? That's just what I don't show get. Your support for your answer by tapping on your device as fast as you can. I gotta go with SpongeBob's gay lover, Patrick Star. That tie went bye-bye. Oh, how I hate ambiguity. Next up, this is why we do this, folks. This one seems like it's over before it's done. And nobody's nobody's feeling that SpongeBob. They so just came out. The next state over. <laughs> He just came out for Pride Month, yo. Nickelodeon was like, SpongeBob's gay. Even though the dude who fucking Nobody voiced that motherfucker, Steven Hillenburg, said he was asexual. But truthfully, the man Nickelodeon, you know, the voice actor don't get to say what he is. I mean, really, the person who created the series should be able to say who it is. But if Nickelodeon says that motherfucker's gay, then he's gay as hell. SpongeBob is officially gay. Just tight. <laughs> 
get those last second Nobody votes like this, SpongeBob, huh? <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, bong, winner, winner. Bong. I like that. <laughs> Carrie can't hear, but the dude was totally like tick tock, tick tock, bong. It's like he knew that he was on a show where fights are being made. It's time to round out the bracket. It's me, Luigi. It's really going back and forth. I'll put Goofy out there, man. The Fuck that Goofy ass fool, man. <laughs> Moving into overtime. Don't forget Tally to bring a towel. As as you can to cheer for your answer. Tally was cool as hell. He's just trying to get fucked up. Yeah, I know. I didn't say he was annoying. That's nice. Just doing an imitation. The tie is broken. Right. I'm going to miss the tie times. <laughs> Time for a title change. Which cartoon character has a dark secret? Get mm. those predictions in now. Mm, dark secret, eh? Definitely. <laughs> SpongeBob, duh. All right, man, homies in the crowd, you're welcome to suggest what game we play next. Time's running out. Otherwise, I'm gonna make that pick. Time to step away from the prediction table. Let's jump back Matt to our bracket for round two. Mm -hmm. Just me and Carrie. Where in the world did Mike go now? <laughs> This one's looking over. Those are both SpongeBob oh, characters, right? Mm -hmm. Patrick was a SpongeBob character, right? The finals are just a win away from these next two answers. We should play GeoGuessr, though. We were fun. Voters are being That's loud awesome. and clear on this one. No one thought it would be it this close. It all looks different now, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just running out the clock now. 2020 Geo Casher. Like falling off a log. I like it, though. It looks fun. Like, check one this out. One last switch. Like a world break famous your places. Heart. I hope your States, answers still make stuff. sense. That's cool. And now the definitive matchup. <laughs> Most likely to break your heart, huh? Well, this is a difficult one. <laughs> Dem Dem Ninja in the Chat says Luigi deaths us. I believe I believe that <laughs> shit is true. He's on it. We have a winner. The Italian, duh. Most likely to break your heart. <laughs> Let's see who won it all. <laughs> it's to me, Luigi. It's not to me. Uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a you. Oh, whatever, right? Like, Aww. Ah! All right, COE, get at me, man. Mike Mason to gmail.com. I definitely have a uh, sticker pack for you. All right. So, because nobody suggested a game, mm -hmm. me and Carrie are going to play GeoGuessr real quick. Ooh. What the fuck is this? Hell no. I'm not playing any of this crap. How do you do challenge? What? All right, that's not happening. Me and Carrie are just going to collaborate on this one. <laughs> Ooh, man. I hate when GeoGuessr mm. does. If you guys aren't familiar, GeoGuessr just throws you into a random place and you have to figure out where it is. All right, let's look at this. What this is this? This does look like the middle of America. 
Damn, but man. Yeah, I know, doesn't man. mean it couldn't be anywhere. This is in like, the same. Um, damn, look at this. Like there is nothing. This it's gotta be like in the Midwest. Where where are we? Homies in the chat, tell us where we're at. But this is. I hate when they do this. The, the only worst <laughs> thing is when they throw you into random parts of Russia, because like I don't know. There's like 80 billion parts of Russia. Oh wait a minute. Same Tetris looking language. What's up? So we're we're in the United States map. It says, yeah, no, this is the United States for sure. I did okay. pick that to be clear. Well, very flat. This looks like it could be Nebraska Corn or anywhere K. near that. I'm going to say not Nebraska because most of Nebraska isn't as flat as Kansas. You think this is Kansas, huh? I think it's maybe Kansas. All right, well, do you want to just make a pick? Because I don't think we're going to get anywhere here anytime soon. It is really freaking flat, and that looks like Kansas. All right, well, let's go ahead and make a pick then. All right, here we go. Let's find a highway in Kansas at least. It's got to be a lot of these Breeze agrees with me. Kansas right, where are we at? Fuck. What do you want to pick? Um, right here? Wow. I mean, so like right here? Anywhere in Kansas, probably more west. All right, here we go. I'm guessing. Here we go. What? Oh, no. Nope. South nope. Dakota? What? Oh, South Dakota, yo. Dang. No, oh, look at this. What road was this on? Yeah, oh, I haven't been route. that far north in South Dakota, so. It wasn't even a highway. That was 300, 363rd Avenue. Well, we fucked up, okay? Because I really thought it was like more like, like 345th Avenue. I just didn't want to say anything. So, yo, we were so close. <laughs> we actually got a lot of points for that. We okay? got some Kansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, corn, Kansas, outskirts of Omaha, right, well, look, Iowa. Montana, we're definitely like, Idaho. All right. Well, we're, <laughs> all right. We're calm down. We're definitely we're not there this, now. Yeah. We're in the Southwest now, perhaps. Where are we? There's mountains. Where are we, baby? What is this? But not a lot of mountains. Where are we? Definitely desert. Lots of sage. It looks like uh -huh. cattle. Also cattle. Are we in Arizona? But some mountain-y looking areas. I know. Where are we? I love GeoGuessr, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> Lots of sage. I know this isn't as fun for the audience, but nobody suggested a Jackbox game, so... I don't know, like Southern Colorado? Very Southern Colorado, and maybe... Yeah, you were saying Arizona, yeah. Damn, everybody's says Utah, right, maybe. Utah but... or Montana. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, let's pull up the map. Hmm. Montana's way up here. Yeah, not Montana. Utah's down here. I am saying Southern Colorado. Southern Colorado? Girl, you're wild. You're wild. <laughs> Didn't you say Arizona initially? I I thought it was down here, yes, but Colorado, yeah. New Mexico, Arizona, yeah. So Southern Colorado is almost New Mexico slash Arizona. I don't know. New Mexico is Southern Colorado. That's my guess. Somebody here, Bree says North New Mexico. So we're basically in agreement because Southern Colorado is northern New Mexico. Basically. Or was it Nevada? Hmm. What? All right. I, yeah, I, I totally see that. We're still Somebody close. did. Bill. Bill guessed Nevada. Damn. Greg, Greg swears it's Wyoming. All <laughs> right. Here is the story about the United States. There is a lot of freaking corn. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> God damn it. This Somebody here said Four Corners area, and I was just going to say, like, Iowa and kind of, this is the drive to melt right here from Nebraska. No, look at these trees, though. Pine trees. And temperate. It's definitely temperate. This could be anywhere. This is terrible. This is a bad draw here right now i'm telling you this is bad <laughs> i don't know i agree with jacob here the four corners area so up by four corners 
Illinois, Illinois, Iowa. Is Minnesota one of those corners? Ooh, wait, that was grain. Go back to the right behind us. That, that is grain, not corn. Okay, what does that mean? It means that that farmer's not getting a big subsidy. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have any geographical information. Okay, thank you, Carrie. This is this is definitely north. This is. I'm telling yeah, I'm telling you, these it's trees north. are suspect to me, yo. What is going on here? So where are we? Are we in Maine? Are we in fucking? Oh no no, we? definitely not Maine. We're still in the Midwest. We're in the is Midwest. My, or is my northern opinion, Midwest? Yeah, yeah, we're really? just a With little bit trees? further north. They got fucking Christmas trees and shit growing randomly in the middle. Brees thinks it's Pennsylvania. Greg thinks it's Kansas, but I, I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't think it's Kansas. Well, they've got dead Doc people. Robert says Ohio. They've got Remax. Where? What? Well, they've got a big ass satellite dish. We're deaf in the oh. cut. I'll tell you that right now. Because look, Google Maps hasn't been updated and like it looks like shit. <laughs> so you know it's got to be like... <laughs> Just saying, um. <laughs> you know it's got to be like some assed out area. Google Maps doesn't even appear to go this way. They're like, nope, nope, you can't go down that road. No, we'll take definitely you down not here. that way. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a like, bad neighborhood for Google Maps or something. <laughs> like, dun, 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 well, dun, it's dun, very dun, rural. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Sinclair? shit, that's a Sinclair. Sinclair. That's a Midwest. I <laughs> know. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, all right. That's what I need to see. Where are we at? We're somewhere in here then. Where are we at? Yeah. What do you think? It's not Montana, John. Sorry. This is definitely not Montana. Like, hmm? Look at the, how tall those trees are. Those trees are pretty tall, which means that... I don't even know where the fuck trees are like that at. Is that like up here? Where I mean, fuck... when trees are like that, it generally means it's a little bit more temperate, but I don't feel like it's very far south definitely hell no those are some black pine trees yeah i feel like minnesota maybe minnesota yeah, it's wet there lots of lakes humidity what i don't know that could be wrong bill says read the water tower i didn't see water tower also it's oh high. Right in the sun. <laughs> yeah. What's it say? Thanks, Bill. All right, hold on now. Hold on, hold on. He's, he's right. All right. Ooh, water. It's water. I could definitely read that part. <laughs> Ooh, God damn it. This is that type of city that just puts goddamn water on the thing. Just water. Ooh, in a church. Damn. All right, man. The God damn it. And the Google car had to come through like the worst time. But I feel like we're cheating if we just fucking look at the water tower and it's like the uh, Huskadona, North Carolina or some shit. It's not North Carolina. Woo. Wait, wait. What did the word in the sky say? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to make a pick here. What is it, Kara? Where are we at? Um, <laughs> Cornholio, Illinois. Watertown. <laughs> yeah. What? What happened? What? They're trying to charge you for this now? They're mad because I have an ad blocker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? damn. Oh, were... look at that. You were it's actually even Kansas closer than me. Iowa. Oh, wait, no, it was south from there. Okay, it was yeah. Iowa. Okay. Kansas slash Iowa. Yo, we just got 3,000 points on that, though. That was a pretty good guess. Look at that. We are good. We fucking murked it. All right, here we go. All right. What? God damn it. <laughs> here you go. A bunch of people. <laughs> like, like this dead body in the bush or something. <laughs> the fuck is this? Woo, look at this. All right. I'm going to say this is a little bit further south, but look at all that sand. That's this kind of come up with a, This got a bit of a Utah, even Oregon Missouri vibe Missouri Valley. Me. What the fuck? Ugh, damn. Yeah, I guess Utah, I suppose. I don't know. It seems kind of flat for that, though. That is a very sandy river. The Platte River is incredibly sandy. I don't know if the Missouri gets like that anywhere. 
there's all kinds of like recreational. Colorado River, maybe at some point. Look at like, this. You're looking for a license plate on that Jeep? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> what is this? The hell? They look like a <coughs> blow up doll. What is going on here? Who is. <laughs> well, Mike. John Tremlin says it looks like Oregon. Bill says Mississippi. Greg says Maine. Wow. Jacob says California. Quite the uh, quite the disagreement here. I don't know. I I don't feel like California looks like that. I'm not sure where where in California looks like that. I definitely feel like it's on the western side of the U.S. Lots of sand. I know. Lots of but sand. I'm just saying. Go a little. Whoa, 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 oh. whoa, 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 whoa. Skate Creek Road. Yeah, now if you Google this, it's kind of illegal, but whatever. <laughs> Somebody probably will. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Those look like cedars on the side of the road, which are kind of weed trees. Oh, in here. Should I call that shit? I call that shit. It's in Washington, oh. my dogs. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna Cheater. Randomly... I did cheat. <laughs> I'm gonna pick a random spot in Washington just to just to not be fooled. And river Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I called that shit though. I said that shit was the Western US. Yes, nice, thinking, nice. All right, here we go. All right, this is whoa, here we go. Here we go. What is this? Oh look, it's our neighborhood. It looks like our neighborhood. Damn. <laughs> oh, look at that though. It's got Brown Street Stop signs. Sign. What are Brown Street signs at? Hmm. Oh, and wow. what is Claybrook Crossing. Playbook Crossing, huh? Right. I know. I'm just saying. Chicago. Chicago suburbs. Grove City, Ohio? <laughs> Is that really it? What, what, what? Are you cheating? Me? No. Again? I just happened to, to, <laughs> to just thought that, you know, it just... It really reminds me of it had that, a Grove, dot, dot. Grove City, Rose Ohio. Brook, Ohio. <laughs> it had a Grove City feeling to me, man. You know what I mean? Like you just, you know, they just don't make this <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, Derek says that could be Canada. Greg thinks it's Nebraska. <laughs> it, it seems pretty Omaha-ish, but um, apparently it's Ohio, according to Google and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh it's chicago did i not say chicago i feel no, like it's actually did. ohio you guessed chicago and it was ohio i thought you were gonna say ohio no it's right there in claybrook crossing but i just felt like fucking where i thought it was instead of whatever that bullshit on the internet said okay well all right here you we know. go damn we did pretty good all right chicago did anybody want to pick a game that the audience can play <laughs> Because I'm not opposed. I'm just saying we could do that. <laughs> so jackbox.tv is where you would find the games that everybody could play together. Yeah, we're doing fibbage. Let's do this shit. I like it. Fibbage enough about you. Me. Them. Yes, enough about you. All right, back to jackbox.tv. <laughs> and Fibbage is such a fun game. We get to learn about each other. This one specifically. And that's about you. Please tell me more about you. My dogs, wow. this game is not just for a sticker pack. Uh oh. This includes an incredibly rare Garbage Pail Kids Glass Blow Joe card. All right. I really appreciate you guys just stick around for the games and shit. And don't just like stick around for the. the, 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 the. You homies just stick around right now. We're here to have some fucking fun with your dogs. And I really appreciate that. So, thought I'd amp the prize on this one up. All right, anyways. One more spot. Oh, wow. Just one, huh? Well, I will um, give myself 
10 seconds here before I join in. No, let somebody else join so yeah. they can all have a chance at the prize. I'm going to grab a I beer. Know. I'll be right back. Oh, somebody got in. Yeah, they got in. <laughs> no, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, so at this point, if you're still around, you can hit that uh, room code and join the audience with me and a couple of other folks, it looks like, down here in the audience. Mike, Greg Hoke, got ass in the house, Doc's in the house, Jammin, C-O-E, A-B-C, and D-A-R. <laughs> Ass in the house, baby. All right, we're doing this. Sorry, guys, I had to grab a beer and that sort of thing. I'm Cookie, and this is Enough About You, the game that shows just how little your so called friends know about you. <laughs> Eight players. Okay, everybody look to your left. Now look to your right. One of you will never be a lawyer. I forgot what my point was. And anybody watching can join the audience anytime. Audience members try to spot the truth and choose their own lies to fake out the players. Let's hit it. Here's how it works. You're gonna see a question about yourself on your device. Just answer as honestly as possible. In a sec, you'll get your chance to lie about your fellow players. You get 500 points for everyone you fool, a thousand for finding the truth, and when the question's about you, you get reputation points for players who get the right answer. Ready? Well, I am. Submit your honest answer. Scrap blow tube. Whatever I was playing with. <laughs> the little plastic tubes opals come in. All right, question one. The title of this player's autobiography would be blank. Okay, enter your lies. Okay, which one is the truth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anal back cock. Well. Didn't you mean anal black cock? Not necessarily. What is back cock? Like a cock growing out of your back? See what everybody selected. <laughs> that was a good one. I like well, that. Hats off to you. So much for that one. <laughs> Ooh, freaky. It's 
not the only freak on the show tonight. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh. Right? <laughs> Here's the question. The weirdest place this player has slept is blank. Write your lies now. Time's almost up. <coughs> All right, where's the truth? Answers involve vans. This is hilarious. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. All right, let's see what you guys picked. Goddamn audience motherfuckers. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Kojaman is like slaying nice this shit. Try this <laughs> on motherfuckers slice. like in Somebody it to get that card. Somebody knows how to lie. <laughs> Seriously, look at that score. That motherfucker is like the lying expert. Now listen up. <laughs> the last thing this player lied about was blank. <coughs> Type in your lies now. about that timer. Finish quick. Okay, seek the truth. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. So you guys are brutal. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> There'll be no prizes for this round. I'm just playing the like, league. Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well. Let's see how things shook out. <laughs> quite, quite the, the spread here. Oh, Greg got us, you motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Good, that was a wholesome lie. Okay, I didn't involve molestation or something. Goddamn. Whoa! Well, you know. Alright, Doc. Well, thank you. Just saying. This, this game reveals truth. That is... <laughs> I like it because we get to learn so much about each other. Okay, focus up. <laughs> the movie that never fails to make this player laugh is blank. Oh, All right, no. type in your lies. 
Ooh. I'm taking a risk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell you that right now. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm proud of this answer, regardless of. <laughs> No regrets. No regrets. No regrets even. <laughs> Come on, Ten's running out. Okay, find the truth. Mm -hmm. Degenerate art. I'm just thinking about the fact that that would be the movie that would never fail to be left. What about the parody, though? Degenerate <laughs> fart. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh, God. Ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, there, I'd say almost every answer on that board is, is a pretty good one, actually. All right, let's see what everybody picked. Do you imagine if I actually like made that parody? What Fletch? No, degenerate fart. <laughs> see? I just see a bunch of demos with dubbed over. No, no, no. It would be like a one for one parody of degenerate art, but just ridiculous nice somehow, fibbing. some way and all farts and dead. Slinger would not. never speak to me wow. again. Wow, damn, it really actually, is degenerate art. Damn, that was cold, man. <laughs> Slinger. Nobody tells Slinger about this. <laughs> All right, here it is. Okay, a then. weird thing this player can't bring themselves mm. to throw away is well, blank. I have to your lies now. You might know this already, Carrie. Or you might not, I don't know. Gosh. Three answers there is being, no, the three answers I'm being given now are, are seem pretty. There were it's something very specific, and it's been like this forever. Hmm. But I don't ever fuck around on this one. Huh? I, and I mean, I've been watching some Throwing Away lately, so. Yep. Yep. I've thrown away a lot of stuff lately. I've been going through like 15 Please years with the stuff from my house after I moved. And, been crazy, you guys. All right, find the truth. Glass scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty undies. Oh my god. I gotta save a screenshot of that. <laughs> well, the sex toy wall we were just talking about. Women? What? Wait, what? Whoa! <laughs> Okay, well. <laughs> Gary's like, guys, stop that. Glass, glass graphs, first glass. Those are all very good guesses, and I would say yes. I don't think I've seen him throw away any glass. <laughs> Whatever. Sex toys, I think I handled part of that. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Baby, how little they know you. <laughs> yeah, it's so true, though. We, we once found a really old sex toy from like and you all we, missed it. my ex-wife like found, fucking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> packing for milk very found in a suitcase <laughs> baby is this your sparkly thing <laughs> see what we got oh, this player's sitcom style catchphrase would be blank. <laughs> type in your lies now uh. <laughs> That's I wish we were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be nearly as funny then. Don't go there. I guess that's why they call it the blues. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it to go. 
I got mad at Carrie when she told uh, Kate from Bethlehem this. Yeah, like, right? Like, don't be telling my sponsors about sex toys we found and shit. Like, <laughs> 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 it wasn't that deep, but it made me laugh now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be kind of professional here, damn it. <laughs> okay, take a look and find the truth. Play me it up, yo. <laughs> Ooh, I went like a minute. <laughs> it's too early for this mess. <laughs> Living the dream. Okay, let's take a look. I like the flaming it up. Here. Wow. <laughs> Damn, maybe she just cashed in. Good line there, well fibbed. I would like a minute. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Alright, another one. Mm, another one. Mm. Another one. Mm. Alright, alright, alright. Hello, what like you mean it? Damn, ABC is like rocked into the lead, yo. Okay, here's your question. The two weird foods this player loves to combine hmm. are blank. Mustard Write and your lies butter. now. about that timer. Finish quick. Okay, here you go. Find the truth. Corn chili. You mean cinnamon rolls and chili? <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate and pickles. Gross. Pop and meat. Well, that's the same thing. That is definitely not the same thing, because uh, you would not be vegetarian. If... <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog water and cookies? That sounds very Arrested Development-like. I'm on it. <laughs> Yo, but chili is dank with corn. That's not even weird. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, answer, okay. man. I'm not playing this. And some flies, too. Huh? <laughs> Come on. God damn it. Mm -hmm. We got Audience you. Motherfuckers. We got you. That's like totally normal. Sam potato chips and sandwiches. It's like what you order when you go to Jimmy John's or Subway or any of those. Would things. you believe... Cock and meat is the truth! Cock and meat! <laughs> Told you it's the same thing, though. Try this one. <laughs> Something this player absolutely will not eat is blank. Okay, enter your lies. Tuna, boogers, or salami? Well, I think boogers will be my... Sorry, wait, I'm gonna be giving away the audience answer. Oh no! Just saying, there's one of those three things that I wouldn't eat. On purpose. I guess. <laughs> Hurry up and finish before time runs out. Sorry, I, uh, 
<laughs> okay, here are your choices. Ooh. I knew this was going to be a good one. My grandmother's dry pussy. God damn. Whoever did that is, I salute you for your creativity. I mean, if it was wet, would that make a difference? <sighs> I salute you for your creativity, Carrie. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I don't know. Is wet pussy better than... I mean, a pussy well, like that probably better dry. Like, I'll just bring my own general, lubricant. Don't worry about it. An answer. <laughs> I'll bring the mayo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Who picked what? In my butt versus ass. What's the better answer there? That's what I told Carrie when we first looked up. I was like... But I mean, you know, I mean, if you think I'm going downtown, you gotta be crazy. And it was also. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> was that I, I, I shut up because I was really curious to hear where this was going. <laughs> <laughs> Great lie there. But I'm sorry, that wasn't so right. <laughs> <laughs> My butt was asses like. Come on! <laughs> it's final round time. Everyone's gonna write one truth and one lie about themselves. Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Make those lies convincing because you get points for everyone you fool and for guessing other players' truths. Get to it. <laughs> good cat. What a good cat. Hello. Your time's half gone. If you're still working on that truth, you might want to move on to your lie. <coughs> okay, spot the truth about this player. Oh, God. Well. the truth. Well, I don't know what a high ropes course is, but it sounds like it's something real, so I'm click on that. Like a zip line type of thing, right? <laughs> sounds like that shit they don't let us do at Melt. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the Melt has course. like 8 billion things, but you cannot Sorry. do like the course that's like for the gymnastics shit because they know we're going to fucking just immediately <laughs> break legs and arms and all sorts of shit. Yeah, no, you can't go up there. <laughs> I 
how are those statements different? The person who names themselves ass, I simply... <laughs> I like to walk around I, Yeah, yeah I, uh, eh, I... Maybe. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I'm going to lean towards... <laughs> But my, my, my point here is, how is that not normal? Those aren't necessarily polar opposites. Take a guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that's specific. Can you name all 12 bones? <laughs> or are they the same one? Got a thank you letter from the uh, e EJI. We did, oh, nice. you know, yep, yep. Dear Torch Talk, thank yep. you for your generous donation. So my question is the the one bone, the twelve bone. Which is it? <laughs> I've had some bad sprains and such, but I've never actually broken a fucking bone, man. I'm lucky. I haven't either. Really, Carrie? What? Really? Yeah. Me and you are broken bone, bone homies. Yeah. I love you, Carrie. It's just another reason <laughs> that we're so great together. I love you. <laughs> if we ever do break a bone, either one of us, we'll still be good. Right? <laughs> Again, how are those? Okay, which one? Is there a Bangkok, Ohio? God. Okay then. Does he suck? He or she. Does he or she suck or do they suck? Oh, they don't really suck. I don't know. These weird names are hard to d determine. Do I suck or do I suck? You definitely suck, but I mean, I'm not trying to get it. <laughs> 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 <This is> a thing. <laughs> a biggity, biggity. Wow, that was, damn, nobody was fooled by that. <laughs> wow, that's, that's pretty amazing, actually. All right, and ABC definitive victory. Yo, okay, so...
man with the likes fucking thing, man. ABC, definitive victory. Um, yeah, we're gonna wrap that up. Close that down. Right. Um, yo, ABC, get at me. Like I said, that last game, uh, you, you specifically get the prize back with the fucking garbage oh, belt kid. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, these are rare as hell. Because Mike owns them all. But, I mean, not yes. only because of that, but... Partially because I do scoop them all, <laughs> like, as soon as I see them, like, uh, online. But uh, I do that so that I can redistribute them to the glass community. And, you know, I mean, I that was just because I appreciate you guys who stick around to the end and, and for the games or whatever, man. Like, the, the whole torch stock thing. And that's what we've been doing here for years now. I, I just, I want to have an experience with you guys. The fact that, that it's through the internet doesn't really mean shit to me. I want to watch Dank Glass with my homies. And I want to play games with my homies. Like oh, that's hey, that's the that's the simple you know like when I when it really boils down that's what it is like we think there's different ways that could happen if we were in person we'd fucking mug glass together, and we might play a different game or whatever the fuck it'll be we'd fucking do something you know you guys get the idea, anyways thank you so much for supporting this dream of you know sharing this content in this way that allows us to have an online party and then you know maybe play some games whatever it'll be but something that that uh really speaks to to our community and what we're doing um i really do appreciate everybody who joined us and plays games and sticks around to the end it's okay if you just stay for the demo too don't get me wrong but whatever i really do my heart belongs to you guys who stay with us for the whole party and trust me like 2021 i i feel like we're gonna find some opportunities to do this together I don't know when and where. I, I just I know I've been thinking about this for a long time. I I gotta be straight, like um <clears throat> not to get not to get into a, like a, a long thing or anything, but like <sighs> people are like you should do an event or you should do this and I'm just like, man, I know what I love to do. I love to film glass and like what we got to see earlier is one of the most perfect examples of what I've been able to, to capture and share. And Well, you're honestly kind of doing an event every week. Perhaps, but you, but I, I gotta be straight. Like, like uh, what, what Ross and Dave made with this fam thing. Oh yeah. I yeah. just fucking saw. Um, and it's not just that though. It's like glass Vegas like, and, and like the, the beat expo homies and the melt. <laughs> glass art society like, that one yeah. too. all of this shit um i don't want to be the guy who like has to put together those logistics man i just i would rather do something like associated you know like but maybe maybe during the beat expo whatever they do and either be it um later this year or uh next year if they just decide to put it off to next year Either way, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I would love to have uh, a thing where, it, you know, like the, the Beat Expo, for example, they have like like an educator happy hour or this or the, this thing and, you know, whatever. Like, I would love for us to have something like that at these shows, you know, like one night after Glass Vegas, you know, the Torch Talk fucking uh, party, you know, or happy hour or whatever. Something like that. I really want to do these things. Like I'm not. I I love what I get to do. I I I, I don't want to like stretch my legs trying to make money or do this or that. I love. Like I'm I'm right where I need to be. You guys have put me exactly where I need to be by being here. And some of y'all pitching in, whatever, all that. I'm just saying, like I, I'm exactly where I need to be. I don't want to add all this extra like that pressure. But if we're talking about just us getting together and doing what we do here, yes, like I want to do that all day. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have like a torch talk festival. All that shit. I'm sorry, we get to have our festival every fucking Tuesday. Yeah, like, but I want us to have like a. And if a, if fifty or something of you guys come out, 
you know, like at, at Las Vegas or the Beat Expo or BAM or Melt or whatever it be. We should have our own little, like, private thing just one evening, whatever it'll be, or, you know. Anyways, um, thank you guys for making the virtual version of that possible from day one to even talk about what we're doing here now and... I mean, like, like donating the, this thing to the EJI just a minute ago or, you know, like this, all of it comes down to you guys being here, part of this fucking virtual party every Tuesday that we've been doing since like 20, late 2014 or whatever, I guess. I don't know. It's been a long time. And I just, I, I, I'm so grateful for where we're at with this right now. You know, not just my ability to cover all these amazing shows. It's the community that's grown around it. The good time that we get to have the, the, the theoretical good time. I'm thinking about having, you know, when we can all get together and do this in the future. All of it. You guys have made all of this amazing thing possible. Thank you for being here. Uh, I really appreciate you guys, man. I hope everybody's holding up. Okay. Out there. I know it's still a crazy time. Feels like things are maybe settling down in some ways, but in other ways, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, let me make this geoguesser thing go away, so you can be greeted by the lovely visage <laughs> of Carrie Strope, who will send you guys off to the rest of your evenings, which I hope are as beautiful as her. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you again, once again, everybody for joining us. It's always great to have you. Without you, this is not possible. So yeah, thanks for joining in and we'll let you get to the rest of your evening and see you next time.